TB Cox, welcome back. It's been a long time. It's feel like it's been years, but it's only been 15 episodes since you've been on here. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. How you been, man? It's been a long time. How did you survive? How did you do? How did you weather the storm, the hurricane Ian? I mean, it was, you know, <clears throat> like we were just saying, it just, you know, you know, it turned. Yeah. We got lucky. I, I didn't think, even when it said it was headed towards Tampa, it still said kind of north of Tampa. And I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm it said south. it was going to hit south of Tampa. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, I'm like 30 minutes, I'm like 20, probably 30 minute drive, maybe 40 minute drive from Tampa. So I'm like, I mean, I'm just, and, and we're I'm far enough. Yeah. We're 30 minutes. I'm 30 minutes, or 30 miles in from like the coast. Mm -hmm. Like it's going to dissipate pretty rapidly. Yeah. You were, mm. you so were in I a wasn't, good spot. Yeah. I wasn't that, I wasn't concerned. But then of course, then, then I saw what happened to Fort Myers. Fort Myers got wow. fucked and totaled. It looks like a nuclear bomb went off. Yeah, on. that's yeah. pretty crazy. I didn't expect that. Underwater, everything's fucking underwater. Yeah, I, I really thought. I just saying that I thought. I thought out oh, they're overreacting. Yeah, you know, too. like they always overreact, and then you see it, and you're like, oh fuck, oh, it really devil. Yeah, like New I Orleans. Got lucky. Yeah, yeah, it looked fucked up down there, man. We got so lucky it didn't hit us. We would have been fucking destroyed, especially in Tampa and St. Pete. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I we mean, also got saved by the storm water. surge because of the the counterclockwise, the way the storm rotates counterclockwise, it sucked all the water out of the bay and out of the. Did Gulf. you see the pictures of, of see the, the Hillsborough River? It's like empty, no. completely no. dry. Yeah. Oh, well, all I, I remember, I was watching TikToks and YouTube and stuff, and there's people walking out like off a of bayshore where the they're, ocean is. Yeah, they're they're yeah. walking way out. I mean, yeah, it sucked all hundreds the water of out. yards so out. Weird. They're just walking around. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, we got lucky as shit over here. They say we're uh, we're guarded by the, the sacred Indian land over here. That's why we get spared all the time. Yeah, apparently there's. Uh, <laughs> he's not from here. So, oh, you are from here. I'm yeah, Matt's from here. He's been scamming uh, here since the eighties. Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> apparently there's some sacred like Indian burial grounds all around Pinellas County, and uh, a lot of people around here like to say that that's the reason the storms always miss us. No, oh, I mean I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there's no other logical I, explanation. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Did you guys lose power at all? No. That's always the worst part about yeah. these hurricanes, especially not obviously in Fort Myers. There's a lot worse things that can happen, but it seems like always in Tampa, like especially if Irma back in 2017, there was like a lot of trees down, a lot of shit got ripped up, but nobody had power in my neighborhood for like seven or eight days. I'll take your word for it. And it was, I was <clears throat> terrible. Where were you at? Oh, you were probably Coleman. Prison. Oh, you were in Coleman. That's probably one of the like? safest places I, to be during a hurricane. Is. Yeah. yeah you never lose power there, do you? Oh, I don't know. If, no, they didn't lose power. But what was funny is, you know, I would get these these emails on the core link system. People, are you going to be okay? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> a nuclear You're in a bomb fortress. hit here. I'm in, exactly. I'm in a bunker. Like, <laughs> really? Trust me, I'm going to be fine. They served. I remember, you know, like they don't let you leave. They just lock the doors. And then, what if it floods in there, though? Okay. Um, it, 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 I mean, in other prisons it's flooded, but it didn't flood there. Yeah. But yeah, I've, I've heard of places where it's floods. Oh, they'll move whole pair prisons. Like if they think yeah. it's going to hit, they'll put everybody on plane. That's what I was thinking. Out. Like, will they take you out of there? They will. They'll it. put you on con air and get you out. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. And they'll push you, send you to another, pr they'll fly you out of the state, send you to another prison, stack you up eight people in a cell yeah. and, yeah. you know, but they don't want to leave you there to, to listen. The, the one thing they're going to pretty much keep you alive. Mm. You know, unless you're sick, and then you you're just, worth money you know, to them. Each prisoner is worth a lot of money. Yeah, it's what thirty thirty two thousand dollars a year. <sighs> Crazy for people that are, uh, I, there's probably going to be some new listeners here today. We've had since you've been on, we've acquired quite a few new subscribers and listeners to the podcast. Mm. We're now north of half a million subscribers. Whoop whoop. And, beow, beow, uh, beow. So tell people out there who don't know who you are, give them your elevator pitch, your true crime elevator pitch. Mm, how how long how an elevator pitch is that three minutes or five give minutes? Give us like a minute, a minute, a and minute. Half. Yeah, give us a give me a sixty pitch. second a, a sixty second pitch of of your background and who Matt Cox is. Uh, my name is Matt Cox, and I own a mortgage company at one point, and then I started pulling real estate scams, and I started creating synthetic individuals, synthetic people, and borrowing millions of dollars in those people's names. Eventually. I was caught. I was on the run for three years. Uh, eventually, I sorry. Eventually, I got caught by the Secret Service, and they gave me twenty six years in prison. I did thirteen years and got out. Thanks and, to Frank Amadeo and, and and met yeah and met um met Danny. 
tell the story about how we met for people that are listening, how, how you reached out and then the, so sense. when I was locked up, I, I, I had written a bunch of, uh, true crime stories cause I've been locked up for a while and I wrote my own memoir. And so after I wrote my, my book, other guys kind of like started saying, Hey, you ought to, you know, you ought to write this guy's story. You ought to write that guy's story. So I ended up writing, you know, Ephraim Deveroli's story, the guy from War Dogs. Mm -hmm. And then I got a bunch of guys in, in Rolling Stone magazine and I optioned the film rights to some of my stories and I wrote a bunch of other stories and started talking to reporters. So when I got out, I wanted to start a true crime podcast, which I never did. Um, I kind of did, but well, you kind of got one now kind of. So I wanted to do true crime. Like I thought, Oh, I'll do that. And so when I was in prison, I mean, I was in the halfway house, a buddy of mine said, you need to reach out to this guy, Danny. Um, he runs this YouTube channel called, called uh, concrete and he's in the area and I was like, well, why? He's always got this guy on there who talks about real estate. And I went, man, nobody wants to talk to me about real estate. And he said, yeah, yeah, well, he could, you should still talk to him because you could, you could tell your story or you, he could help you with the, the true crime thing. And I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll call, try and call him, see if he'll answer some questions because, you know, nobody else had any answers. And so you were in the halfway house. I was in the halfway house. Yeah. So I talked to Danny a few times. He, I sent him an email. He called me or we arranged a time to talk. We talked for like 30 minutes or an hour. Then another time I talked to him again. Then another time I talked to him again. And he kept saying, you need to come on the podcast. And I was like, okay, well, I'm in the halfway house, but I can't. So what ended up happening was when I finally got out of the halfway house, I'd been out of the halfway house about a month or two. And Danny called me up one day and said, listen, I had a guest fall through. I had another guy fall through a couple of weeks ago. I haven't put out anything out in a week or two. I need a guest. You said you would come on the pod. And I was like, I don't know, man. He goes, you said, I answered your questions. Oh, you, you vetted him. You said, you come like on. A bad guy, don't you? And I was like, <laughs> I did fucking say that. <clears throat> so then I came on the podcast and I walked in and said, you know, let me tell my story. You said, you said, yeah, how long does it take? And I said, man, I got a 15 minute version. I got a 45 minute version. I got a two hour version. What do you want? And he goes, two hours. Hell yeah. I talked for two hours. And it ended up getting like in the first couple months, I think it got like a million. And then since it's, it's got 700,000 or so, so it's like a 1.7 million or something. Like yeah. That. that was the rise to fame. Right? The full episodes at like 2 million, 1.8 million. And then we, I posted another one that's got like one and a half million. I put a couple of clips of it that have millions of views. And then yeah. that was, that well, was history. And then I came back a few times mm -hmm. and I've got other ones that came back where they're half a million, a million. Like, I don't think anything ever got as much as the very first one, but yeah. You know, the algorithm's tired of me now and I'm nobody. And now I'm just, they're like, yeah, we're done with you. And so this, you know, now I come on here and he said, now, Danny just said, he's like, look, let's, we're going to talk a little bit about you first, just to let people know who you are. He goes, cause you know, a lot of your podcasts flip, a uh, flop. He just said that. Damn. I walked in that, like I just drove across the bridge. Cold, I walk man. in, he goes, bro, your shit flops. You just invited me to come. Oh my God. He's mean spirited. You know, he that's is. not what I meant, Mash. That's come tough. on. Man. That's tough. I got, I'm getting, I got my mm. girlfriend's giving me shit about coming here. She's is like, she really? She's well, no, oh, by the way, she's no longer your girlfriend. No, she's congratulations. Beyonce. Fiance. Yeah. Congrats. Your fiance. Congratulations, um, Matt Cox. Yeah. Uh, boy, let me tell you how, what, what, what a work that was, huh? I put in the, I definitely put in my work, bro. <sighs> hey, we've actually kind of seen that whole saga oh from the God. beginning. From the on to the off to the gone and back. See, and, and, and this is the kind of thing I say. And then I get, <laughs> then, and he'll put this out in a week and she'll come home and, I'll be like, hey, She's what's mad. going on? She'll go, nothing. She saw the podcast. Will she yeah. watch these? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Really? I, I'm Listen, she goes through all my comments. Like, Ooh. I really genuinely always felt like she wasn't paying attention. Yeah. She didn't care. She didn't this. And now I realize she actually does go through all my stuff constantly. That's how women are, man. And I'm like, you know, she'll go, did you read this comment? I'm like, what? What, what comment? Uh, you know, this guy said this and this. And I'm like, what, when did you start reading my comments? She's like, I've always read them. I just never <laughs> wanted you to know that I was reading them. So, yeah. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. That, that seems like all, that's like the beginning stage of every relationship where the one, the, the lady or woman is always going through every little detail of the man's personal life to make sure everything's he's not, uh, he's he's not, not being sneaky. I am, though. That he's not some sneaky. con man. I, know, I was going to say, <laughs> I am like, she's like, you know. Yeah, but you're not running around. He is around the other con man. No, no, I'm too old for that. That's all they really care about. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, we got we got engaged like uh, a couple about a couple weeks ago. Congratulations, yeah. Matt Cox. Yeah. 
I figure that gives me six six months, maybe a year. <laughs> buys you another six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you going to be? Uh, are we going to be invited to the wedding? Yeah, of course. Oh, I mean, I, I definitely got to go. I'm assuming there's going to be a wedding. I don't know. I got to talk to her. What kind of wedding could Matt Cox have? It would have to be oh, small. Man. Like, hey, well, no, it's got to be big. On. You got to gotta have some good ideas. <laughs> we got to rent somewhere oh, sick. Oh, you know what was funny? Um, you know Dan Wise. Oh, Dan Wise. You don't know him, but they call him Art App Dan. He was in prison in Art App. Um, and uh, he was saying he's like, bro, you got to have a YouTube wedding. And I go, what is oh, that? Oh yeah, you should. Goes, yeah, like we got to bring cameras. We got to this. I was like, oh, I don't know, man. Oh yeah, like the Hulkster's wedding. What was like his wedding? Ric Flair. Like? Then when they filmed it. Or no, though maybe that was Bubba when Hulk I was filmed the Rick when Hulk, was the, Hulk was the best man at uh, Bubba's wedding at oh, Bubba the Love Sponge. That worked. Out. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Bubba yeah, that was did the not work out wedding. too well. No, Hulk was Bubba's best man. Oh, Hulk was Bubba's best man. Yeah. Yes, you're right. You're right. Wow. It, and this is the one where he. You know what else is? Wife? You know what else yeah, is crazy? Yeah. That didn't unfold uh, too yeah, well. That, yeah. You know what the craziest thing about the Bubble Hulk relationship was? He lo- he trusted him so much when Hulk went in to get his knee surgeries and his hip surgeries done. Because they put him up, made him unconscious. He made Bubba go in the room, the operating room, to watch the doctors. They were best buds. Like because he's so such a high, a uh, high um, profile profile person. person. Yeah. Because of that, and I Bubba guess make sure the, security. He, he had to make sure the surgeon was doing it right. No, no, the, the <laughs> real reason that he had Bubba in there was to make sure that they weren't like taking photos of him naked, taking right, photos of yeah. his fucking dick or his balls or whatever. Yeah, Smart. like uh, did you uh, see that? Was it? Joan Rivers or something like they she was out and they're like taking pitch selfies oh, with her and so stuff and, and then she died on the table no no yeah so they got all these selfies and then she dies they're like oh fuck oh hell yeah. no inappropriate so fuck I had no is, That's are those lawsuit. photos on the internet I'm sure I'm pop I mean, I'm sure Austin they're definitely on Reddit no because I remember it was why. a big deal they were like what do you, what what like fuck. maybe if you were more concerned about your patient and less concerned about getting she might selfies not have died yeah that's yeah. what they're saying but who knows she was old. Instead of tr- Joan Rivers, instead of trying to get pictures of J- fucking Joan Rivers' tits, why don't you try to save her life? So anyway, Matt Cox's wedding. Mm. That sounds fun. Where are we gonna have it? Oh my God. Right, like it's so. We I, we got to call the doctor. The doctor will fund it. Oh, the doctor will. The fund doctor. It. Oh, see, just t- he listen. He <laughs> loves that. He loves being out there. And yeah, the he'll, doctor. He'll he'll set us up somewhere nice. Yeah, that's that's that might be true. That mm-hmm. might be true. The doctor will be the best man. Shout out to the doctor. I think the doctor yeah, will be the best man. He's listen. I know when he's <laughs> when he's busy and when he's not. Like he'll have a, a, a four or five days where he's busy. I don't hear from him at all. And then he'll have like a a slow day or something. And I mean, I get TikToks all day. <laughs> he long. sends him to you. <laughs> rah, rah, rah. I was like, man. Uh, yeah, he's uh, yeah. Where does he live again? I was just. Doesn't he live down in Fort Myers? N- no, no, he he did live in Fort. Oh, that's right, he did the live. Doctor, bro, he was a little bit further. He was like <clears throat> Venice. No, no, Venice is north. Naples. Of Fort what were the little islands down there? Like Sanibel. Sanibel, Sanibel yeah. got total. Yeah, yeah, like Sanibel Island is where I think he lived. Sanibel got like the Sanibel worst. Sanibel was right in the middle. That <laughs> it's not funny, but so yeah, they got smoked. He was there. Then he moved. Then he moved. Um, I forget uh, where he moved, but then now he, I think he lives in uh, Texas. He's moved a couple. Oh, times. really? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah. What kind of? He must not have like a dedicated practice, like hospital that he works at. What kind? I wonder. Huh. I don't know. I don't know how medical. <laughs> he's very. He's a very mysterious. He is doctor. a very mysterious. He's a very. He, <laughs> I don't even know. If, I don't even know. To be honest, like I know his <laughs> I'm name. Not even sure if he's I'm not a even sure it's his real name. <laughs> I don't even know if I know his real name. <laughs> oh, shit. So do you know anyone who got fucked up by that hurricane? Um, Jess has a friend who just bought a house. Mm. And she was sending pictures like, I mean, it's underwater. The roof got ripped off. The wow. It's got, you know, you can see all the drywalls, you know, the roof gets ripped off. Then it rains inside yeah. the, the ceiling and the drywalls all hanging down. And, yeah. Yeah, it's bad. Dude, the, our beach, the beach right across, you know, the, the beach, you could hit a golf ball and hit the beach from here. So like right over the bridge here, it was shut down for like three days straight. And they put the cops put like sit there. There's like six cop cars on each side of the bridge to make sure no cars go over. And we were going over because his grandma has the the uh residence pass to go over to the beach because she lives, she right lives over there. there on the beach so we, we we were going over there every single day just checking on it and it never really got that crazy like that photo you sent me of my kids at on the beach yeah we, we went over there and we were hanging out on the beach yeah. for a couple yeah. hours like like running around i'm like are you good you gonna be okay you, you know you're, yeah, hey, yeah if we you were need anything and he's like yeah we're riding out they're all you're on the beach with yeah. the kids i'm like wow he's he's not worried at all no yeah. it's nothing man we, we got lucky man it curved 
Even with lucky, Irma, we man. did the same thing with Irma. We were like right on the beach, right like the f- fucking eight hours before Irma made landfall. And Irma was projected mm-hmm. to hit us up until maybe like four hours before. And, and it, it took curved. a hard right. Mm. We'll get lucky over here. For some reason. Tampa Bay knock area. on wood. <clears throat> they said we've they haven't had like a devastating direct hit over here on this side in like a hundred plus years in this area. It's two. I know that's scary, right? The clock yeah. is People ticking. Like, oh, it's been listen, the longer it's been, the ticking. better chance there is is gonna yep. happen. I mean can't dodge every bullet. No. But if you look at like if you look at the shape of the Gulf of Mexico, you can tell that there's it looks like fucking thousands and thousands of hurricanes have gone right up through there and just taken all that out and they've eaten it all away just by the shape of the bottom half of the United States, you know? And it could like, Bruce you, in there. I wonder if eventually due to, uh, you know, whatever kind of weather events or climate change or if, um, like new Orleans and that whole area will eventually just sink into the fucking ocean. Like they say, Miami sinking into the ocean. Miami sinking in the ocean. Yeah, you didn't know that. You ever seen the Dan Pena video? No. <laughs> My, they're saying <laughs> the climate change. The climate change people. Dan Pena. <laughs> oh, the guy who screams and hollers. Yeah, yeah, the old yeah. guy. He's okay. Yeah, so he's there's a angry. video. The guy is wild as hell. There's a video. Boziak loves him. <laughs> he's so oh, funny. that's Boziak. If he was rich and old, yeah, that'd be Boziak. I could see that. There's a video of this lady. This guy's like, I don't know what Dan Pena's story is. He's some sort of like he lives. I think he lives in the UK. I have no he idea. He lives in the UK. He's some sort of real, big real estate like billionaire, I guess. And uh, some lady at some conference asked him a question about climate change and flying yeah, yeah. jets around. Doesn't, doesn't exist. And he doesn't ripped exist, this yeah. lady apart. Smashed. He actually made a really good point, an interesting point about real estate. He goes, all these fucking beachfront condos and beachfront homes in Miami and all up and down the East Coast and everywhere you go, you think the banks would loan money if, you, if they thought that these places would be underwater in 10, 20, 30 years? Right. Typical mortgages on these places are 40, how long are they? 40, 50 year mortgages? Yeah, 30 to 40. Yeah. So they're saying if, if these banks thought that climate change and was and the elevation of the, of the, uh, the oceans rising were going to take out these properties, they wouldn't invest in them. But I don't know what they might because if you look at the history of banks, they don't really give a fuck about the long term. They just care about the short. I mean, if you look at the the housing crash and all the other shit like the shit you were involved in in the 2006 crash, the banks clearly weren't that competent to like look deep into the fucking the loans and the mortgages. And well, yeah, there was I mean, it was just their their belief that that it couldn't crash. For some reason. So, you know, they they just weren't concerned because they just didn't think the entire economy could collapse. And well, bankers aren't it did. Bankers aren't like. Economists, right? Bankers aren't aren't none of the almost none of the economists saw it coming, you know, like it was amazing. Like so few people saw it coming. And so those people are now like, you know, they everybody thinks they're they're. um fortune tellers now they're like oh my gosh you know they're like what the, but all the signs were there like he mm-hmm. you know why people just weren't looking people just believe that it just couldn't collapse and you know do, did you see the big short yeah, yeah. what's the guy's name again so good oh, i forget that, the guy's that, name the guy that christian bale plays yeah he's great <laughs> uh, so that's such a good movie it's a great it's a great movie it's an amazing movie yeah it's a great movie because like i was mentioned this because i was actually was talking about it today is that if you watch um too big to fail like that shows it from like the the top up, like what's happening. You never really, you, you you know, you don't you don't understand it on a on a very small level. Like mm-hmm. a, what's what like was really it. right. Like you're looking down, like hey, bad things are happening. Here's why. You never really get a sense. But with the big so short, the they really it. take yeah. you in. Like this is the problem. This one guy. Mm-hmm. This one girl. This one. Like these brokers. These brokers because of these bank. Like they show you the whole thing, and yeah. then you start to go. Down to the very bottom. Right. Yeah. And then you're like, is that enough? Well, it is if you start adding zeros. Eventually, it's yeah. this massive upside down, you know, pyramid that just collapses. He's at King of Diamonds in Miami getting a lap dance in the strippers telling him about all our condos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you and he's like, how many do you have? <laughs> yeah. He's like, I thought you just had one. And she's like, no, I have seven. <laughs> Oh, man, unbelievable. <laughs> Red flag. It's a great scene. Hey, yeah. pull out that Dan Pena video. I want to show that to Matt. Pardon this brief interruption, but I want to take a minute to talk about this incredible supplement that I've been using for over a year now. 
after it was recommended to me by nutritional scientist, Dr. Dominic D'Agostino on this podcast. I take Dom's advice when it comes to anything related to nutrition, diet, and longevity, because as we get older, these things become more and more important. That is why I started using Verso. Verso is a company that is dedicated to translating scientific breakthroughs into products that hold the potential to increase longevity. I take Cell Being, this one right here, which contains nicotinamide mononucleotide or NMN based supplement paired with naturally derived micronized trans resveratrol and TMG. These two chemicals are actually precursors to what's called nicotinamide idenine dinonucleotide, which is commonly known as NAD. And NAD is essentially the precursor to energy, cell repair, and longevity. If you've ever tried fasting or even intermittent fasting and you've gotten that feeling of super high energy or mental clarity, it's because your body is activating these genes called sirtuins, which are actually longevity genes. The downside is as we age, NAD declines. When I found out I could naturally increase my body's activation of sirtuins and naturally activate my body's production of NAD, I was sold. And it is so much more affordable than doing NAD IV drips. Head on over to ver.com. S O and use the coupon code concrete at checkout to save 15% on your entire order. That's K O N C R E T E at checkout and get 15% off your entire order. Or you can just go to V E R dot S O slash K O N C R E T E. It's linked below back to the show. I interviewed a guy today. Um, I interviewed a guy today. Who's a, a, a foreclosure attorney. I texted it to you. Yeah. He's a foreclosure attorney and he was, uh-huh. and he was doing foreclosures when I was, in Ebor City, mm-hmm. you know, running my scams. And so he's like, I mean, I don't know if I foreclosed on any of the properties that you were involved in, but I did a whole podcast with him talking about yeah. foreclosures. They were like two Oh, did hours. you really? Yeah. Was, you think I, he did something on yours? No, I mean, he said, I, I don't, he said he didn't have any idea, you know? Yeah. Um, but so, it, it was, it was, it was just interesting to talk to him. Like I could have talked to that guy forever. Yeah. I don't know if anybody will ever watch the video. He was doing it at the same time. Yeah, he was Back for then. the banks. He oh, was okay. foreclosing on people for the banks. And he's mm-hmm. like, you know, and so we started, you know, just talking about the different things. And he he had read my book. I actually went mm-hmm. to a podcast. I went to a Podfest um, meeting and he was there. And it's funny because like I was leaving and I said, oh, I, I understand. So you're an attorney. He was like, right. And I was like, yeah, I own a, I, I, I run a, like a, a YouTube channel here in Tampa. If you're ever interested in coming in, I said, I mean, it's true crime. He goes, I know who you are, Mr. Cox. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I, and he goes, I, I read your book. And I went, <laughs> I start laughing. I go, I look at Jess and I go, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at him. And, totally serious. Stone really? face, yeah. Dude. And I was like, um, yeah, well, uh, yeah, definitely. You know, I was like, yeah. uh, if, if you're interested, he goes, okay. And, but then. A month or two went by, and he contacted me and was like, "He came on." Yeah, he came on. He oh, was like much cool. nicer. The same, like he just seemed initially. I was like, "Did that seem odd to you?" She was, "Yeah." He didn't seem like he thought it was funny. Yeah, I said, "No, he didn't." But he was super cool when he came on today. Maybe he was starstruck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested to hear your take on this. Let's watch it. All right. Well, first of all, he's definitely wrong about the ten feet thing. Yeah. Second of all, uh. In Miami, even on the beaches here in Florida, all throughout the Carolinas, if you want to build any kind of new construction on the beach or anywhere near the beach on the barrier islands, you have to have the first whole fucking like 20 feet of the building has to be solid concrete, unhabitable space, like parking garages and shit. So that's definitely a thing. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's because of globe of uh, of the rising sea level. They don't it say just, it's probably yeah, but, more insurance. Reasons. Yeah, it, it could be for insurance. It could right. be for flooding. It could be for, you know. It could be for hurricanes. It mm. could be like for sure. That's that's the reason why. Yeah, for like floods and stuff, like that. and for water. That's basically the same thing. If you're saying if the sea level rises, they wouldn't invest in these construction building these giant you know high rises or buildings. Not on one water. motherfucker. I, you know the 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 problem with. Yeah, you know, the problem with my view is that much like what's his name again? Dan Pena. Dan Pena. Dan Pena's view, although I'd like to think my pitch would be way better, is that it's, <laughs> is that it's it's similar to his, only because there are so many people making money at it that it, it's it's like it's like COVID. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it, it's. You know, like they put themselves in a position to make a bunch of money. Then they create a uh, create a crisis that they are able to profit from profit from. 
And then nobody says anything like, you know, COVID, like, you know, it, it's it's the same thing. Like, where, where are the hundreds of thousands of people and millions or half a million people that died from COVID? Like, yeah. you know, I mean, people died. You know, it was a really bad cold. Yeah. But if 40 to 60,000 people a year die from the cold and a, a two or 300,000 died from COVID, okay, well, you're right. It's double, triple. Yeah. But, you know, where were the millions? Oh, no, we fixed it. Really? Because other countries that didn't do the same things that we did, there's they, they didn't have a problem. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are other countries that just didn't shut down at all. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. like, yeah, we're done. Wear a mask, but we're just going to keep going. And that whole country's still there. Do they have some deaths? Yeah, they had some deaths. Like, it, it's the same thing. You know, to me, global warming is like, is the planet, you know, is it warming? Yeah. Would it do it without us? Yeah. yeah. You know, would it, are we contributing to it? Probably. But the problem is, it's like padding a file, right? So if I investigate you, there's a murder and there's five or six of us and the police believe that Danny did it, then what they do is they interview enough people and the people that all agree that Danny has said something bad about Hat Rack and they're gonna, they, there have been bad blood and he was had talked about him and I heard him say something and this and that, those are the ones that they really write everything out. The other guys that say, well, you know, there were some issues yeah. between the two of them and they go, okay, but do you know? You know, well, no, I don't think, but he, he didn't kill him. I know he didn't. I think this, I think, okay, so... So you don't really know. No. Oh, okay. Well, no, I don't. Okay. So then they put, well, I talked to him, but he was non-responsive, right? They only really focus on the people that support their theory. Mm -hmm. So when you're done, you have 150 <clears throat> people that were interviewed and you've got 40 people that 100% say that Danny killed Hat Rack, mm -hmm. you know? And so the other people were all like, yeah, he didn't see anything. He didn't have anything conclusive. He didn't really have anything. So they, they really only focus on the people that support them. And before you know it, all you've got is people that say that you murdered him. And the truth is, it was, you know, it could have been anybody else. There were other people who had stronger motives. Mm. And then if you go to trial, well, then they just put those people on the stand, you know, because the prosecution can't do a, a, a thorough investigation like the police can. And it's the same thing. Like, so if you, if I'm saying, hey, I want to come up with a whole, I want to come up with a, do a whole investigation into global warming. I need money mm -hmm. from the government to, to support my, my, um, you know, my scientific endeavor, my, my experiments or whatever they go. Okay. They give, Oh, it's for global warming. Okay. So you think there's global warming? Yeah, I absolutely believe there is. And I think this will help prove it here. Now, yeah. if you say, no, actually the data I've covered so far doesn't <laughs> prove that there is global warming. Yeah. I need a, a, a grant. They go, yeah, we're not, we're not, uh, no, nah, no, nah, we're not, not going to work. Give now, if that same guy came back and said, listen, I've, we found a lot of I proof. found something. We found something. We think there's definitely global warming. They go, would well, you need some money? Mm -hmm. So before you know it, all you have is scientists that are out there that are in support of global warming. They get to talk on CNN. They get to talk on all these platforms. They get pushed. Sure. They get funded. The people that are saying that it's not really a thing, like it, is there a contribution? Well, sure, probably. But the people that are saying no and I have proof – don't get funding. They don't get picked up and get, they don't get to talk on CNN. Mm -hmm. They don't get invited to the conferences before you know it. They just kind of fall to the wayside. Like mm -hmm. you can prove anything with enough money. I mean, listen, they used to tell people that cigarettes were, were good for your lungs, Yeah, you know, and there was science behind it. Like, Oh no, we did a study. We got 400 people and we, this, and we, that, yeah. and the capacity of the, this. come They're on, stronger. man, are you serious? <laughs> like it's, you know, it's, the same things that we think, and, and by the way, when I was growing up and the concept, like they act like this concept came up in like 2005 or something like that. Listen, I, I heard, we, I was hearing about it when I was in school mm -hmm. and like fourth and fifth grade, there were, there were textbooks that were talking about global warming. But, and by the way, so within 30 years, like half of Florida was supposed to be gone. We're still here. Yeah. And what happened? There's tons of countries out there that aren't even agreeing with any of this. Like China's not cutting back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So no, not I, at all. Right. But you have to pay f money in. If you, if you put out this much of a carbon footprint on your factory, you have to pay in this money and this money. Why are we paying in all this money? These other countries aren't paying in any money. Yeah. Mm. Like how much have we really, you know, cut back? I don't, I don't, I just don't, I just don't. I just don't see it. And it's like, oh, well, the proof, yeah, the proof now, but in six months or six years or 50 years, listen, 
100 years from now, people might be laughing their ass off. Listen, these guys thought. <laughs> yeah, they were warming the fucking planet. I'm going to believe this. Mm-hmm. As, as much as we laugh about people, you know, healing you by putting leeches on you and sucking the bad blood out. It's like. Yeah. Well, they try to make it into something way more than it really is. Like people like like that lady who was in the stands talking to yeah. Dan Pena. She's like, my children, my children, children. what are you going to do? It's the same thing with like the vaccines. People just, they make it a part of their fucking being. Like right. it's, it's what it's like, like political people, like like hardcore Trump supporters. They, that's part of their identity and right. who they are. What's well, the same thing on the, you know, on the other side, like people get on both sides. Yeah. yeah on both sides. Like I, I, I just doesn't, it just, it just kills me when like, like you and I can't be friends because you believe this and I believe that. Okay. Well, right. why? So you believe that? Okay. That's fine. I'm sure there's lots of things that we disagree on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why can't we be friends? Right. Like, because you want to build housing funded by the government that supports pedophiles <laughs> yeah, yeah, and child exactly. molesters. Exactly. Why would you or do that? You want a wall. <laughs> you, you know, you want a wall and that's wrong. And that's, mm-hmm. well, I mean, bro, what are you talking about? I just want to secure the borders. I just don't want people to come Dude, over here. And- you know, Biden, I just heard, maybe you can Google this, but Biden just like did something to fund some giant part of the wall, like fixing, uh, he just put a bunch of money into like filling in a gap of the wall in Texas, I think. Just, you know, it's and nobody covers it. It's not anywhere on CNN. No, well, did you see? Was it there was some mall shooting? I don't I forget how long ago it was a few weeks ago. I, I saw a clip a few weeks ago where they were in like a, a mall or something, and some guy pulled out a gun and started shooting people. And some other guy who had a carry permit pulled his gun out and yeah. shot him from got like 200 feet away and just killed him, executed right. boom. Right. Nobody covers it. Nope. Yeah, why? He legally had a gun and he killed right. the guy. What? And saved people. Right. Where's gun control? What? Right. What, are, what about the people that don't want you the know? guy? The guy who saved it, who shot the bad guy, he was illegally carrying a gun. He was no, legally, legal, legally. He was. He was legally. Carrying, yeah. He was right. legally yeah. carrying a gun. That's what I thought. I mean, there's lots of there's lots of stuff like that. You just never hear about it. I mean, it's just it's ridiculous. Yeah. It, it's it's the Andrew Tate thing mm. with with oh, me yeah. and these me and these people in uh, in Los Angeles. Well, you and these people, what, what's, what do you mean? Oh, I didn't tell you. It's the Los Angeles people. What are you talking about? Oh, my God. Um, so I was doing a, I was, I, was I hired or partnered with? I partnered with a company that I was doing um, a, a true crime series on, you know, on me being in prison, interviewing these guys and writing their stories. Mm-hmm. So this guy was for a, a company, um, what's it called? Uh, Little Everywhere. Uh, it's a podcast company. I listened to some of their stuff. Like I'd actually gone, out, gone to Los Angeles and met with them. Um, it was a, a, um, the guy's name was Dan. And, and it was really nice. Like there was a, two people I met them. They're super nice. And so I meet them and, um, you know, we talked on and off. And eventually we end up, you know, kind of... Um, Bro, this could be a podcast on it in and of itself. I mean, honestly, this is a fucking hour long thing. I, I'll wrap it up. That basically we started you don't have to make it. No, you can talk about it. We got time. We, oh my god, we started doing this. We started doing the series about the first. It was going to be several different, uh, several different stories I'd done. Right, like I think it was going to be like Marcus Shrinker. like a TV series. No, no, it was just a podcast, like an audio podcast okay, okay. for. And they sell theirs to like these big time podcasts. Like they have, the, they have a bunch of. Super cool podcasts. Okay. Like the nice like serial, like, like, like the produced podcast. Yes. Yeah. Heavily produced. Right. right. Amazing. Like great. They do mm-hmm. great work. Yep. It's like an audio documentary, basically. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I'm trying to think of what I had listened to. Uh, they did, a, they did one on all different types of scams, like a multi level marketing scams and stuff. Really, really cool. Um, so we met, we are, we met, we talked, we negotiated for however long, Dan, super nice guy. And, you know, initially when we met, it was going to happen right away. Like, you know, as soon as we're done, we're going to start taping, you know. Okay. So we, we, we eventually come to an agreement and we're going to do like Marcus Shrinker story. Then we were going to do, um, what was the other story? Um, oh, then we we're going to do like, um, like Carrie's story. Then we were going to like, uh, um, Carrie Lee, sorry, um, another story I wrote. Um, we were going to do pain. We were going to do, um, uh, uh, atonement. Like I have like, we have like three or four stories we're going to go over. So we start recording one of the stories. 
it took months and months we recorded. Like I'm two hours here, three hours here, four hours here. Like it, it really dragged on. Are you recording them out there in Los Angeles? No, no, we're doing it like uh, like they, they sent me a mic. The, the okay. head said the <laughs> whole thing. It's all going through, um, not Streamyard, another another company. Um, so we do this whole thing. Uh, I thought it was really coming out. I thought it was good. Uh, Dan was doing it, and and then it, then suddenly he got another project. He had to go do this, go do that, and it, it kept dragging and dragging and dragging. Like half the stuff they said was going to happen on the time frame it was going to happen didn't happen. Yeah, but you know that's fine. Like I was glad to you know be like they were like it was going to be a real thing, right? Like this thing literally was like over a year and change where they were going to have it done within very quickly. Turned out they dragged me for over a year and change. Fine. Then Dan comes back and he says, and he says, um, here's the thing. He said, we just got hooked up with another big production company. Like, I don't know if it was Apple or who, who this other, um, this other podcast type, uh, um, whatever, um, thing was right like a platform platform like i don't know who it was like it was like apple or <clears throat> yeah somebody Spotify, who's somebody big exactly it was big they just got in good with them they were like listen and they want true crime they said so dan goes the problem is matt like we didn't do a great job the first time he was and i thought it was good and he said the problem is you and i became much more friendly towards the end joking around getting to know each other and having fun with it he said then we did the initially he was, so would it bother you if we redid the whole thing. And I thought, oh my God. God damn. This is like 12 hours or something, 12 to whatever. And I was like, you know, but I'm going to be a good sport. Yeah. No problem. I said, no problem, bro. I mean, I want to get the best result possible. Like, you know, um, and keep in mind too, like the deal we worked out was great for me. Not, not, not great for me. It was a good solid deal. Like I'm, I'm getting so much money per episode, which I hadn't been, I'd been paid one time. Like it was supposed to be every episode, but that's fine. That didn't happen. That's fine. Um, then once they sell the series, all of the, I was going to get a portion of the, of the revenue that created from the, either the sale of the show or, and the back end. Like if it, sometimes they just put it up and you get the um, ad revenue. Sometimes the place just buys it from you. Either way, I got a portion of that. So I'm looking to make a chunk of money mm -hmm. and have a really good version of my stories out there. And then those stories I get to keep a portion of the intellectual property if it's sold. Like a lot of these things are being turned in. And they had some that had been optioned and were being turned into things. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. Things are good. We start doing it again. We get about halfway through the whole thing. And now they've hired, they've hired a girl named Joy. Um, Joy uh, is a, uh, what do you call that? Uh, um, Shoot, their website's on there. I forget. Uh, Joy's, uh, it's, yeah. Oh, wait, who's Joy? Well, Joy is, I don't know. What, what What do you call her? What do they call her? Whatever. She's like a video, like a, a producer, video producer. Okay. So, Joy, and, and I think I pretty much talked to everybody there. Who's that? She's calling you. No, oh, I don't know. That's yeah. Mike Hudson. Um. So, anyway, yeah, that's Dan. So. You got neck tattoos. Yeah, he was in some band. He was in like a big time uh, band or something. Uh, Modest band. Mouse, it says. He was in Modest Mouse? After years touring and recording with bands Modest Mouse. Cool Damn. Kids. That's wild. Right. Okay. Super nice guy. Uh, Joy, <clears throat> Joy, seemed, Joy seemed nice. Um, we start do, redoing all the things again. Great. We're redoing it again. Halfway. Oh, actually almost done. Because we were at the point where, like, Shrinker was, like, had, like, jumped out of the airplane and, you know, that kind of stuff, right? And at one point when we were sitting there, I was talking about the financial crisis. We got to the point where the financial crisis had happened and, and basically Bernie Madoff had gotten arrested. And that kind of uncovered Marcus Shrinker's scam where he was running a Ponzi scheme. One of the schemes he was doing was a Ponzi scheme. So that ended up. I said, as a result of that, people started wanting their money back and want to know where their money was. And now it very quickly unraveled that he's running a Ponzi scheme himself. And so as we're talking about it, um, all of a sudden, Joy kind of just starts shaking her head, right? Because I'm on like StreamYard or Zoom or something. Yeah. No, she kind of just starts shaking her head. Yeah. And I remember going, and, and, I, and I could see she's shaking her head. Dan could see she's shaking her head. And I think Dan said... Joy, something wrong? Yeah. And Joy goes, keep in mind, they're in, they're in California. Yeah, yeah. 
And Joy says, well, it just got me thinking about, you know, just, just the, this, this whole government in general. And okay. And, and I, and I, you know, I didn't say anything. And then he goes, well, what do you mean, Joy? She, she goes, you know, just what a scam the whole system is. You know, it's this whole <laughs> system that's set up by these old white guys that just set up this whole system. And um, she said, you know, it's just, it's just all, basically, she said, it's just all a scam. And I was like, and so I'm sitting there like, it's such an odd thing to say in the middle of this conversation. Yeah. And, and so is then she, she's recording with you. She's one of the producers. She's on, but she doesn't have a microphone. She's not part of the no, show. She, she does. Well, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know yet. Cause I have never heard of an episode. Keep in mind, the, the, this is over a year and change. They've been having me do these. Right. But you're recording. never produced anything. Like I've never heard anything. But so, so to get, I'm trying to understand like what the dynamic here. The is. dynamic is you're sitting in your house recording on, on a microphone and you're looking right. at them on telling like a the screen. story. Oh, by the way, they had me build out a whole thing with a mic. Like I've invested hundreds of dollars into this whole thing, this whole production, so that I can get the best. I'm in a closet with all of these, um, the what do you, the styrofoam. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. All, yeah. The whole thing is like, I mean, like soundproofing, soundproofing, like it's perfect. In a closet, carpet, the soundproofing, the mics, everything. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there, and the way it's supposed to work is like Dan is going to be asking me questions, and I'm telling him a story, and he would interject every once in a while, and we'd laugh. But now she's involved too. Whether or not she was going to be a part of the program, I don't know. Yeah. You know, they never got that far. So we're now on like 20 some odd hours at, of doing this and at least. And so she says, you know, oh, a whole bunch of old white guys set up the system, this and that. It's completely rigged. And I was like, OK, right. And, and she's like, you know, just it's just so it's just, the whole, whole thing's unfair. And this whole like she starts in with like the Constitution and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> and I'm kind of like. OK, and then, you know, I don't want to like I don't want to jump on it. Yeah, I don't want to jump on it because I already get this vibe. She's young. They're in yeah. California. She's ready to snap. They're extremely liberal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to say anything. Okay. And then Dan set, makes a comment like, Matt, what do you think about that? Oh, fuck. <laughs> and I went. <laughs> he just spiced it up. And I remember thinking, don't say anything. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, I, I, I'm sure we have very different views. And I looked and I, 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 so I said, you know, here's the way I look at it, Joy. I said, things aren't always out they, they seem. And I said, I get it. Like you're, you're unhappy. I said, but let me put it like this. I said, do you know what is a wonderful concept? And she goes, what? I said, communism, communism and socialism and those types of, of government, um, you know, ideologies are wonderful. We all work together collectively. We share in the, in, in our, in our in the fruits of our labor, we're all in it together. Everything is equal. I said, it's a wonderful concept. It doesn't work. It's never successfully worked. It never will because at their heart, people will look out for themselves. There is corruption. It is everywhere. And she's, oh, you don't, you don't think that we're a corrupt society? I go, I do. But I think we're one of the least corrupt society. Not that there's not corruption, but one of the, one of the least. I said, now, you know what's a horrible concept? And she goes, what? I go, I said, capitalism. It's horrible. You take advantage of people. You work hard to be in, uh, over other people. You get to keep uh, the fruits of your labor and other people. I said, it's horrible. I go, but it works. And I said, and if you're not happy with it, there's lots of countries in Europe that I'm sure you'll be happy with. Send me a postcard. <laughs> I said, I mean, <laughs> you know, and I, I said, wish you well, you know, yeah, right. Like, you know, I get it. Like, I understand not everybody's happy. And I said, so. I said, so what else are we doing? And I could see it in her face. Steaming. She's upset. Yeah. We finish out the whole thing. It's fine. A week later, we have another meeting. We set it up. We're doing everything. Everything's fine. We're going on this and that, this and that. I can feel Joy's irritated. She already doesn't like me. Well, first of all, I'm an old white guy. Yeah. So I can tell um, there's tension there. And so as we're going... Something happens, and I forget what she said, but she said something about, like I mentioned something about Marcus Shrinker, and you know I, I might have mentioned something about his girlfriend, or he had a girlfriend, and he put her in a co condo down the street from his wife, and I, I don't know exactly what the situation was, but I said something that sparked her to say, and it was still out of, like, once again, it came out of nowhere. Yeah. It's like she was looking for an opportunity to She's inject. Waiting for something, man. Right, and it was like, that doesn't really make sense, but okay. Mm -hmm. 
And she threw in, she's like, well, she's like, you know, it just makes me think about all these misogynistic men like Andrew Tate. And, and you know what she said? She said something about, she said something about Gary V. I never got to the, to the bottom of that. I know. Like, I don't think of Gary V as being misogynistic, but, but I don't know. I don't watch too, too. I watch some of his stuff, but so she said something about Andrew Tate. And I said, yeah, what about that? Right. I said, like, they took that dude off of everything. And then she said, she goes, why wouldn't they? She goes, he's a, he's a sex trafficker. And I went, what? She goes, he's a sex trafficker. And I went, I've I never heard that one. I said, I, I actually had, I said, you know, I said, Joy, I think I know what you're talking about. I said, because I've heard him talk about this. I said, I, you understand? I said, he, it wasn't there. He wasn't, he was arrested because there was a girl that was at his party. She was, she was, he was holding people, um, against their will. He was sex trafficking. And I went, no, I said, that's not what I heard. And she goes, well, what did you hear? And I said, I heard from Andrew Tate. He had been arrested. At a, he was having a party. There was an American girl at the party in Romania. The girl was talking, was texting with her boyfriend. He said, well, I want you to leave the party. And she said, I can't leave the party. I, I, I'm not able to leave. And she stopped responding to his texts. He got n- nervous. He called the local police. The police came out. They arrested Andrew Tate. When they got her down downtown, after they'd printed him and arrested him and his brother, I think it was him and his brother, um, the girl said, admitted that, look, I was at the party. I didn't want to tell my boyfriend that I didn't want to leave. And this is what I texted him. And they said, oh, okay. And they dropped the charges. Okay. Mm. So I said, that's what I said. Now that got turned into other things. And people are saying he's a sex trafficker. I said, but mostly people are saying that are basically women that hate him. Mm-hmm. And... So Dan doesn't even know who Andrew Tate is. And so she says, she goes, that's not true. She goes, he was arrested. And I went, I understand he was arrested, but the charges were dropped. She goes, yeah, well, who knows why? I said, well, here's the thing, Joy. I said, if you arrest me for murder, you don't get to throw me in prison and keep me in prison forever. I said, you, there's due process. I said, so I, anybody can be accused of rape or anything, get arrested. Then they go through the process. I said, obviously, they didn't have enough to charge him. They dropped it. I said, so I'm not going to throw someone in jail because she goes, he should be in jail. And I go, I'm not going to throw somebody in jail because you accused him of something. Yeah. You have to have proof. Yeah. You know, like it it always sounds good when you're some young girl who's never been through the system as opposed to, and then the next time somebody blames, says she did this and she didn't, they arrest her. She'll be like, this is so unfair. What do you mean? I'm being treating you the way you wanted to treat everybody else. So I I say, yeah, yeah, that's not what I heard. That's not this. I'm trying to be nice about it, bro. And then Dan, I can see her already. Dan throws in something, set, makes a comment about something and something else, and says something. And then he says, "You know, Matt." He goes, "A year ago, no, I know. I I said, I said, look, I said, just because you dislike the guy doesn't mean that everything he says is wrong." I said, "I certainly don't believe in censorship." And she went, "I don't think he should be censored." And she went why and i was like i I said because you just kind of shouldn't be censoring people i said just because you disagree with one thing that he said doesn't mean that everything i've heard him say stuff that i I disagree with i've heard him say stuff that i do agree with and she says and dan says like what and she says like what what do you agree with and she's disgusted now by the way (laughs) because i haven't been adamant that he should be he should be hung and beaten to death. Uh, she's yeah, yeah. furious that I, he didn't get locked away in a Romanian prison, you know, because some girl accused or, or some girl's boyfriend. She didn't even say it. And they dropped the charges. So, okay. So I'm like, well, I'll give you an example. I said, I, I, said, I, always, I heard this and I thought this was kind of funny. And she goes, they were like, what's that? I said, um, for instance, I said one time he was saying like, as a man, you have to work your entire life. You work your whole life. You'd make all the right decisions. You work hard. You work 60, 80 hours a week. You save your money. You make the right calls. You, you take risks. You eventually end up getting, you eventually end up buying a hundred million dollar. You've got tons of money. You end up high, building like you buy a hundred million dollar yacht. As a woman, you can be a 22 year old hot chick with a makeup kit, get on that yacht and end up with it. And what I mean by that, I think it's pretty obvious. She ends up hooking up with a guy. Mm-hmm. Maybe she gets pregnant. They get married. They get divorced. She ends up with a yacht. Like, that's pretty self-evident. And she's like, they're like, what does that mean? I go, 
in my experience, as a woman, as an attractive woman, you can get a lot from a guy. Mm-hmm. You can get a lot in general. Amber Heard. <laughs> Listen, and, and she, so now she's furious. She's disgusted. And I, and she goes, what? And she's just like, and I go, look, let me give you, I said, just, she goes, in my experience, that's not case at all. I've worked hard for what I've got. I did. And I said, I, I don't doubt that at all. I don't doubt that you've worked hard for what you have. I'm not saying that. I'm saying in general, it's possible. And I said, let me give you an example. An example of this would be, I said, I met my wife, my, my ex-wife. I said, I met my ex-wife. She came in the office, filled out a, a thing. I asked her out. We went out a couple of times. Two months later, she's pregnant. She gets pregnant. I, you know, the alternative of her, you know, having an abortion or whatever, like that's not something I'm interested in, in doing. And she's like, well, then I want to get, I want to get married then. I say, okay, we'll get married. I, you know, if we get married, we'll get married. Then if it doesn't work out, we'll get a divorce. We get married. I said, I end up buying her 54 rental properties over the course of a year, mm. all fraud. Mm-hmm. In her name, she's got a, over a couple million dollars worth of real estate at this point. Things go bad for me. I get arrested. I'm now. I'm not going to be providing income. She's not interested. It's it's a bad marriage. We break up. We get a divorce. I give her a hundred thousand dollars. Pay off her credit cards. Pay off her her car. Give her a couple thousand dollars a month for child support. She keeps all the real estate and the house. Everything. I walk away with my clothes <laughs> <laughs> after three years. And I and I look at Joy and I said, Do you know what she did to acquire all of that? And she goes, What? I said. She was pretty. She married you. And she married me. I said, so my experience is that a woman has the option. A pretty woman can get pretty far. I said, so, and now she's furious. Now, that's my experience. I know lots of guys who have been taken to the cleaners. Like, mm-hmm. that's a real thing. Mm-hmm. You can look it up. <clears throat> it, how many people have, do you know? Tiger Woods. Well, not just that, but look, look, look. It's still good, though. It's unfair. It's unfair that if... You and I, uh, not you and I, but me and some woman, we meet, she gets pregnant. I don't want to have the baby. She says, I'm going to have the baby. She has the baby. I now have to pay child support from here on out. Like, that's not fair. But if she says, I don't want to have the baby, she can have an abortion. Mm-hmm. I can say, no, 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 no. You, you you, I want to keep that baby. I mean, uh, we'll, I'll keep it. I'll raise it. You, you can pay child support. You don't, no. think, you don't think it's fair that you should have to pay child support if you get a girl pregnant and she has a baby? No, no. I don't think it's fair that. It's her. She that it's her decision. Yeah. What you if I? Be, what you're telling me? The girl's pregnant. Yeah. And I say, listen, I don't want to have anything to do with the kid. Have an abortion. And she says, no. Okay. Well, I don't want to have a baby. Well, you're the one who fucked her and got her pregnant. She wasn't there. She's fifty percent. Pro- wasn't she fifty percent there? Yeah. She, she was should. There. She should have. She should have have been on the pill. She should have said wear a condom. She could have contributed too. She was a part of it. We're fifty fifty in this. Right. She but wants. She 50, wants 50, the baby. She, then. Then you can have the baby. Why should I have to pay child support if I don't want to have the baby? You're making me have to pay the, right. You see, it's a double standard. If I say, fine, have the baby, I'll take the baby. You don't want anything to do with the baby. You don't have an abortion. I'll take the baby and you have to pay me child support. That's the reverse. But guess what? That's not okay with you. Mm, That's what you're saying. Right. Now I'm not, I get society. That's the way it is. It's a double standard. I get it. That's fine. I'm okay. I'll pay child support. My point is people don't look at it that way. So what I'm saying is I have this conversation with, with Joy. She then starts talking about white men getting, having privilege. And, and I agree, you know, there, there's been some privilege there. For, absolutely. And so we have that conversation. I said, you know, but Joy, the problem is, I said, I, I said, you're making it sound like she just hated all white people, all white men, hated them all. They were all wrong. They all got preferential treatment. If they had anything, it's because they stole it from someone. And I'm like, you know, the problem is, I said, I know lots of guys that simply worked hard, came up with an invention, came up with a, 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 some kind of a system, came up with a business, worked hard, and made a lot of money. I said, now, the, whether they're white or black doesn't make a, a difference. I know people like this. I'm sure there are black people that the same thing has happened. So it doesn't, it, at this point, I backed myself into a corner I couldn't get out of. <laughs> yeah, you're done. <laughs> At this point, she's now c- telling me that I'm a racist. Yeah, you're <laughs> She's telling you this? Oh, she's, she's saying, not just that, listen, this, is, this was when I stopped talking. At this point, when she said, you know, it's racism, it's misogynistic, and I'm like, what are you 
talking about? She ends up saying, and, and, and she goes, you don't have any idea. She's that woman on the boat that you were talking about. I went, yeah. And, and I'm keeping my composure. She's not. So she goes, that woman on the boat, she goes, she's, she goes, not just is, is that, that un, unfair. She goes, it's, it's, she goes, for one thing, she goes, she, and she's in danger. And I went, she's in, what? She goes, she's in danger. And I went, being on that boat with, with some old white guy. And I went, what are you talking? Nobody said anybody was in danger. She went on the boat voluntarily. She ends up hooking up with the guy voluntarily. She chose that. And she's, no, she's in danger. And I looked at her and I went, Joy, by that logic, I go, every woman everywhere is always in danger. <laughs> and she goes, exactly, exactly. That's it. Now you get it. And I went, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I get it. Then Dan says, you know, Matt, a year ago when we started this project, exactly a fucking year ago, you've wasted a fucking year of my time, a year. You guys have been dragging me on this. So he goes a year ago. Um, when we started this project, he said, I went to look up, um, this thing. It was a, it was a, there was a local news, uh, program in Georgia that was looking for me and the chick I was on the run with. Right. And they called us, you know, uh, John and Jane Doe. Mm. And there was a broadcast about it. He goes, you know, the John and Jane Doe, uh, broadcast where the secret service was looking for, you And I went, right. He goes, a year ago, I was able to find that. I go, okay. He goes, I looked for it the other day. I said, okay. And he said, I wasn't able to find it. And I went, okay. Like, how did this come? This is out of nowhere. Yeah. And I went, okay. He goes, did, he said, a year ago when I looked you up and I was looking for it, he goes, there was one or two videos. He goes, there's hundreds of videos of you now. It's all I could find were these videos. And I went, okay. And he said, what are you saying on these videos? Uh, he's disgusted by me now, by the way. The Why? look on his face. I don't know. He's on Team Joy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like, he, he goes, he says, I'm disgusted. You know, he didn't say I'm disgusted. He said, he goes, I, I've been looking and there's hundreds of videos. And I went, he goes, what are you saying in these videos? What is he referring to? What videos? YouTube, all the YouTube, YouTube, YouTube All my videos. Like podcasts? Yeah, yeah podcasts. Okay. Yeah, YouTube, YouTube videos. That, yeah, and I went, okay. And he said, I, what are you saying on these videos? And I went, I don't know. <laughs> I said, just, I interview, I interview, you know, criminals. You yeah. know what I do? Yeah. And he's, he's disgusted. And he looks at me and he goes, are you saying misogynistic, racist things like this? Now, now I'm a race. Now it's racism. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he goes, are you, like, this is a chick who's saying, by the way, when I mentioned, when she was talking about Andrew Tate, um, and I said, yeah, yeah. And she, he, Dan said, who's Andrew Tate? And I said, ah, he's this guy. I said, uh. And, and she goes, he's a racist. And I went, I'm pretty sure he's black. And, and she goes, she goes, no, she goes, he's mixed. And I go, his father's black. And, and Andrew she, Tate's father's black? Yeah. Really? I didn't know and, that. And she goes, she goes, no, he's mixed. He's mixed. I, I'm just like, look, like, she, you, like, she's like, I am really being attacked mm -hmm. by this chick. This guy, Dan, he ain't doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. He's been spicing it up the whole yeah, time anyway. Yeah, he's he's not helping me at all. He's turned <laughs> yeah, into this. I think he's set this up. Oh, God, listen, it's it's horrible. I mean, there's nothing I can do. And, and I'm not honest, to be honest. Like, I felt like I was being attacked, so I wasn't trying to, to, to say anything. Like, I wasn't trying to say, like, look, you know, the, the whole thing is like, and this is the thing, there's nothing you can say. Like, me explaining, look, I have tons of friends that are black. Like, my buddy Zach, you know. Um, I got, you know, Juan is a buddy of mine. You big know, Herc. He's, he's a big Herc. Big We're good Herc. friends. We're like this. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, it's it's like, I, I I have no problem with with anybody. You know, my ex wife was Puerto Rican. You know what I'm saying? Like my son's half Puerto Rican. Like it's like what yeah, what awesome. what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like what are you? She's desperate to try and turn me into this evil, um, I don't know, old white guy. Which she Racist, said it, misogynistic, right? Multiple times. So I'm not even trying at this point. <laughs> it's like I don't even want to talk to the, you people. Yeah, like I'm done. Yeah, yeah. But Dan says, "What are all, all these videos?" And I'm like, <laughs> I don't. I don't what know, do Dan. I'm mean? just interviewing. I said, I just interview because are you saying racist? Like misogynistic thing? I'm like, racist? Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. she's saying, oh, women are in danger. Like, my girlfriend's not in danger. I even asked Jess when she came home, baby, do you feel like you're in danger when you go to work and I'm not around? Like, or, or in general? And she goes, from what? And I was like, and I told her what happened. And she was like, Jess would probably put an ass whooping on you. Oh, oh yeah. She would some ass. And that, listen, 
she pull a knife out and just cut you. Hell yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so as we're talk, so we're talking at this point, I tell Dan, I said, well, Dan, I, I suggest you start watching the videos if you're concerned about it. Yeah. Like, you didn't watch he, them? and he, he was mad. There's hundreds of videos. I go, right. I interview criminals. Watch some, watch some of them. I don't say anything derogatory. I don't say anything. I said, first of all, I, I don't even think I've said anything wrong. I'm sorry that you disagree. Yeah. We have a difference of opinion, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and to me, it's like, to me, I'm still thinking, well, we're just going to go on. Like, okay, well, this didn't work out. I'm sorry. Let's go on with the story. Like, we're professionals. We've signed a contract. We have an agreement. Let's move on. <laughs> they, they won't let it go. And then Dan says, listen, Matt, after hearing all of this, and it's, it's, he goes, it's very, very upsetting. Very upsetting. He said, after hearing all this, he said, I really feel like uh, we need to talk about this. Joy, Dan, and I forget the chick. There's another chick that runs the place. Her name is, oh, there, yeah, Jane. She is Jane. Uh, J- she is Jane. Don't put this on there. I don't want to fucking ba- out all these people. Okay, all right, cool. All right. So Jane uh, and uh, Dan and, and Joy, they have to get together and have a, have a discussion. <clears throat> and I'm like, about what? Just about what we've heard here today. Oh, he goes, you don't understand, Matt. He said, all of our priorities, all of our values need to be in line. And I was like, oh, okay, Dan. All right. I said, well, let me know what's going on. It sounds like Dan was getting pressured by all these people. It, it, so listen, when, when, it's, when it's all said and done, like I'm thinking, eh, he's going to call me up in a couple of days and say, okay, well, we're just going to keep going. No problem. Instead, he calls me up and he says, Matt, we had a, we had a discussion and uh, I want to let you know that we've chose not to move forward with this project. You've wasted over a year of my time, m- hours and hours. You tied up all of, do you know how many people approached me about doing something with that intellectual property that they tied up for over a year? Mm. How many opportunities I didn't take because of what they did yeah that's bullshit it, it's it's like i'm i'm like at this, this point he and he goes he goes he goes and you know the problem is matt it's not even what you said it's the fact that you were so flippant about it <laughs> that you weren't you weren't upset about it at all so i wasn't outraged properly because you know and here's the thing that that that's comical about this do you realize that I was in prison for 13 years? I was looking to, I was going to be in prison for, thir- for until, until 2030. And I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to take what, I'm supposed to take your, your little crusade seriously. Like I have serious problems. Like I know what serious problems are. This is like a guy going to Iraq and being shot at. And then coming home and wanting to argue over, you know, gender studies or something. It's like, what are you doing, bro? Like I was, I was in prison. Guys are getting stabbed and, and trying and raping each other. And, and all, you know, I'm looking at doing, you know, 20 some odd years in prison and I get out now and you are upset because I think that pretty girls get further than unattractive girls. And they've turned that into, Dan was like, uh, all the women have that I know have had to struggle to get to where they are. And you're, he said, like, D- uh, Jane would love to give you a, a piece of her mind. It's like, oh, I never God. I never said that that Jane or any women haven't struggled to. Like, I didn't say that. <laughs> like, like every in their mind, they turned me into the most evil person they could because I said that if you're a pretty 22 year old. And you play your cards right, you could probably end up marrying some guy and get a chunk of money. And that happens all the time. Johnny Carson's wife got something like $40 million or something. They were married like three years. Like how many guys marry some chick and five years later, they walk away with $20 million they'd never see. Yeah. Like, like it's like, oh no, they didn't do that on purpose. Like that does happen. I'm not saying it's everywhere. I'm saying that what I said makes sense. Right. Like I probably have this. Well, I probably have the same values that they have. I didn't say it correctly. This kind of brings us back to a conversation we've had very early on in our discussions, not on this podcast, but on previous ones where we've talked about trying to rely on other entities to carry your story or sell some project for you or some show or some whatever. When you put all your eggs in their basket, uh, uh, you're basically yielding to 
their ideas, their business, their, their goals, their everything. Like you fucked yourself because you gave up all these opportunities by, by hoping that they're going to do something for you. Well, it wasn't even, no, no, it wasn't even hoping. I have a contract. Right. Like I have an, we have an agreement. Yeah. I do this, you do this. Instead, along the line, they decided that I was a yeah. racist, misogynistic, you know, I, I don't even know what the other things they think I am. Like, it just, it was like, you guys went so left field on this thing. Yeah. It's insane. Like it was, it was, and there was nothing I could do to backpedal. No, you're and I done at that point. I wasn't even super trying, to be honest. I wasn't trying hard because it, it seems so silly to me. Like, like given what I, th what I think is truly serious and what they, the way they were behaving, because I get it in, 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 in their world, it's a big deal because they haven't faced the things I've faced in no. life. Mm -hmm. So to them, that's huge. <laughs> I keep snorting in the fucking. Mic. What are you doing over there, so bro? Pissed off. What you're? I keep I keep like snorting in the mic. It's gonna like really piss people off. I gotta stop doing it. So yeah. So, so I'm that, assuming that, you never got paid. No, you know what they did was they paid me one. And, and initially, you know what we were? I was told. I was initially told that we were gonna do like one story was gonna span two or three episodes. There would be twelve episodes, and we would do like three stories throughout the season. Instead, they suddenly turned one of my stories into what would probably be the whole series. And suddenly I, I ended up getting paid like one time when I was done telling the one story. Like it wasn't what we had agreed on <laughs> at all. And, and so the, what happened the, the at the end of all of it? After he told you that bro, you This guys... was only a few weeks ago. Like, oh, this was really? a few weeks ago. And then you know what happened was he told me, Dan called, Dan said, look, we're going to go ahead and we're going to, we're going to release you from the contract. He said, um, I'm going to have our lawyer write something up and just let you know that you're, you're being released from the contract. He's like, not that I have to, not that you have to, like you haven't produced anything. Yeah. You haven't finished anything. You didn't produce anything. You didn't do anything. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you're lucky I don't sue you. <laughs> so, and, and so he says all that and he, and he goes, he said, yeah, um, he said, you know, but I want to let you know, Matt, that, you know, I, I, you know, that I, I want you to let you know that, you know, I, I still consider you, you a friend, a friend, <laughs> Danny, I don't, I haven't fucked over any of my, my friends, you know, like I don't fuck over friends. Like, what are you talking about? Like, the, like he clearly doesn't think that he fucked me over or that he was like in yeah. their mind, wasted your time for all that. They, you were the bad guy. they laid yeah. awake that night and thought yeah. they'd done a good thing yeah. because I said, Pretty girls get further than unattractive girls. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like I said one thing and now they think that I, that I'm, I, I, I that I guess they think I have assault wife rifles and then I'm out there, you know, hunting, hunting down, you know, people. And I'm I, like, I don't know what they think I'm doing or who, who they think I am, but they've they came up with, and here's all the, that whole discussion. Between Jane and Dan and, and Joy, I wasn't there. Like, yeah. Joy had already turned me into a racist. She'd already said misogynistic. Oh, she She'd already you. said that all women are da are in danger. Sold you out. I mean, man. Hmm. It, was, it, it, it was the most bizarre <laughs> thing yeah, well, I've ever been a part of. It's similar to, like, <laughs> the Andrew Tate work. thing, right? If they don't like what the Andrew, if they don't like what Andrew Tate's saying, now they want to fucking label him with the sex trafficker. Like, right, oh, right. Well, because he's a sex trafficker. But now, oh, Matt Cox said all these things that don't sound good. He Maybe. agreed with Andrew Tate. You yeah, said, yeah, you said I, all these yeah, things about I, women. I said one thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, guess what? Andrew Tate also believes that, like, the Muslim religion is the best religion out there. Because, Does he really? Yeah, because he said he made some comment. Like, if you were, if you said, had, wore a t shirt that said something negative about Muhammad or something, and you tried to, tried to walk across a, a Muslim country, they'd kill you. He said, if you could say something uh, negative about Jesus on a T-shirt and walk through a Christian country, they wouldn't do anything. He's like, that's why uh, Muslims are the best. It's like, <laughs> you're an idiot. Yeah. You know, like there, I can literally pick 95% of the stuff that he says. He says, all, he says he a lot of dumbass shit. He also stupid yeah. stuff. He also says a lot of like joking, stupid shit. Like right. the thing about like if there was a 
what do you say? If, if a dude was dying, suffocating and a woman was suffocating, he wouldn't, if it was his brother, he wouldn't resuscitate his brother. Cause he'd rather fucking give mouth to mouth to this hot chick or something. Right. Something stupid. Yeah, like he, that. he says lots of stupid things, but <clears throat> here's the whole thing. Like I didn't say any of that because the venom oozing out of this chick mm -hmm. was outright. Like I was absolutely being attacked. Well, like you, I felt like, <sighs> Like that, I, and I knew there was nothing I could say. No, like I'm like you could never bring her back. Right. I mean, I try. I made one attempt, and she was so disgusted <laughs> that it was just like, I mean, what am I doing here? Like I'm, I'm like, like, well, why am I going to argue about this? Like I'm supposed to be in prison right now, bro. Mm -hmm. Like I got to see. Like, this, I'm not going to get upset about this. I'm not going to take this seriously. Like I'm good. Yeah. yeah. What What do you think it is? about people like joy like what like we know other people we have mutual friends and we've been in the same situation right. with people that me and shane work with friends of ours that have talked that have we've been in the same kind of discussion before in our little circle what do you think it is with people like them why do you think they're like that and why are they so vehemently stuck on those ideas and so like with every fiber of their being it is like they are right and you are wrong and there's no discussion to be had i think that in this case, I could tell, I could, I felt like these two were trying to justify that they had a better moral, you know, compass, a, a better values mm -hmm. than that they were essentially, it, it's almost like religion. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I'm a Christian, you're a Muslim. I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to heaven. You're going to hell. And and like to me, even Period. that, it's like okay, I, I get it. That's fine. Yeah. I, but, but there's even no then, discussion about there's it. There's no discussion. Not it's just clean that. But cut. like to me, you know, I I could be Jewish and and you know you could be um you know you could be a Catholic. And the truth is, like I, I to me, we can still be friends. Like we have a difference of opinion. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll move on. But literally, Dan said this to me. He said, after thinking about it, we decided that we don't want to give you a platform. <laughs> Thanks, bud. And he said, I mean, you you <laughs> already have a, 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 a platform, a channel, so we just don't want to give someone like you. And then he kind of stopped himself. It's like basically someone like yeah, you. Someone like it was like you. Someone like, 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 we don't want to give you a platform. Like, you know, because the truth is this program probably would have been big. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want to give me a platform to... Yeah to elevate me or elevate my cause or whatever it was. And the truth is like, I don't have a cause. I'm telling stories. Yeah. You have a cause. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> you guys have a cause. Right. Yeah. And I would never have brought up anything that I believe because the truth is I probably believe 90% of what they believe, mm -hmm. but they'll never know that because that's what people like that do. They pick one little, little, thing. You're not and on their team. You're not on my team and you're a horrible person and you're evil and vile and you should be you should be eliminated. What the fuck are you talking about? Sounds like the Nazis. Right. Like <laughs> what what are you or, what are you are you insane? Like that's insane. Mhm. Mm but that's just what happens. They 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 want you to just go they want you to just go away and die. We don't even have the guts to shoot you. We just yeah. want you to go away and starve to death and die. Mhm. Mm He's like, wow, like you don't, I basically, I want to make sure that you can't make an income. I want to take away your platform. I don't yeah. want you to make, I don't want to help you make money. And the truth is like, you hate me and you dislike me for no reason. So they want to cancel you. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely cancel. They want to cancel me. What's so funny is it's like, it's like when you go to the grocery store, do you know what the guy that owns the grocery store, do you know what his beliefs are? When you go through um, the car wash or you bought the car from the guy you bought the car for, do you know what his values are? Like, like how, how mm -hmm. deeper? No, no. You gave them money. We just decided you stumbled across, said something that upset us. And this chick is dying to be upset, by the way. She's desperate to be upset. So you upset me. You're an old white person. I hate you. And as a result, I want to do everything I can to destroy you. So canceled. Like, wow. Yeah. Canceled. They Andrew tated you. It seems like the this sort of I this sort of way of thinking permeates with people that got bachelor's degree, bachelor of arts degrees, or like arts degrees in college. Master arts. I have a degree in fine arts. I, I love everybody. 
I know, but you're an outlier. It seems like more young people who have like college degree spent a lot of time in college and then went and used oh, that, yeah, because... that to get some job, like some some job at like, for example, a production company or an advertising agency. Those people who are a part of some big company because of they got this degree, it seems like they're the I mean, ones. No, I don't know if that, I just know that they, they, I think that a lot of these people are artistic and they, they tend to go into, you know, media type um, you know, uh, industries. And then, so that kind of their, that belief system kind of permeates through their work. Well, this know? also, this belief system permeates through colleges too and professors in colleges. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I universities like, um, what's his name? Uh, Jordan Peterson, you know, he says the same thing that, that the, the universities are like a breeding ground for, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, the whole woke kind of liberal, you know, movements and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and here's the, you know, the it's thing like about mind, that. It's like a mind virus. That's a scary way to say, it. um, you, you know what, what bother what, what the thing about that is that it's, it's funny because like those types of people, like society in a very, in a, in a very real way, society needs people like that. Does that make sense? Like not so much that they destroy everyone else, right. but you need somebody to feed homeless people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> sure. Like you yeah. need you need someone to stand up for, you know, the downtrodden. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you need somebody to do that. Yeah. So I, I get it. Like there needs to be there needs to be people that are advocates. Yeah. You know, but I don't think these people are advocates mm -mm. because these people didn't look into anything. Yeah. They took one thing, turned me into a monster, <laughs> and then patted, broke their arm, practically broke their arms trying to pat themselves on the bat, yeah, back yeah. because they thought, oh, we did a good thing. Really? Yeah. Did you? I don't think you did. But, mm -hmm. you know, but that's the thing is like, like, I get it. Like, you do need, you do need people that, that, that are, are trying to kind of push the envelope, but not so much that you end up crushing everybody else the people yeah. that are like that are the people that don't have any real problems Th that's what and that's what i was saying when you said i was trying to say when you said why do you think that is because i don't think i don't think in general like they've ever really truly faced anything devastating right you know right like like if they'd ever you know like gone like, through so, cancer right you know yeah. survive something or you know maybe they came from war-torn you know uh ukraine or something yeah, they grew up like in the Soviet really Union. right they really had seen poverty and they'd really see then Death. maybe right. they would say hey i got it that puts things in perspective not that what they're saying isn't important but you know what it's not so important that i need to destroy everybody who disagrees right it's like when things be so, become so good we look for problems exactly yeah yeah you can't yeah if it's too perfect then yeah you just create yeah you create your own problems so yeah that's a problem with the uh with hollywood man hollywood's that's why hollywood's going down the gutter yeah and uh the independent people like you are on the rise i mean i hope so i'm working on something I'm you're working work on something new now? No, you you know what I'm working on. We're gonna. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. What yeah. happened with Pack House? Pack House was great. It was a fantastic podcast. I went Fucking in the riveting. I, I was, went in the comment section. Oh, did you? Yeah, I was okay. just reading through. That's funny, isn't it? People that just watch a YouTube video, they don't even watch it. They just like go to the YouTube video and they in the comment go to the sections. Comments. Yeah. yeah, I've done that too. I, I don't yeah, typically do too. that, but it was Pack House. So I went through and looked and was looking at all the things that, you know, guys were like, you bro, you didn't make any money all that time. And he was like, no, man, I didn't. You know, he was and he was answering. He was in yeah. the comment section answering. Yeah. So he yeah. was doing a great job. He was yeah. like hammering away. Yeah. He's not afraid of the trolls either. There's a lot of trolls in there. They're like, well, how does Danny get all these fucking guests? And there's some guy in two there's years. Like, there's one guy in there who goes. It's just Matt Cox. Matt Cox gets <laughs> yeah, him all yeah. these guests. <laughs> oh, yeah. You screenshotted that. <laughs> that, was, that was funny. Oh, it's true. Shit. I get all my guests from Matt Cox. He's all the most, of them. He's the most well-connected man in uh, in media. Oh. Who did you who did you give me to? The what, did you think oh, of, yeah. what did you think about? Um, Root. Ryan Root. Ryan Root. What yeah. did you think about him? I thought, I thought he was I thought he was good. I think, you know, the I think the problem is he has a better story than he's a great story. Than than he tells. You know what I'm mm, saying? Like, like, yeah. well, he just started telling it, so he's not used exactly. To it. Like, yeah. like he, like off camera, when I asked him about, like, you know, like I go, so what kind of money were you making? And he really started telling me about the kind of money he was making and how it was coming in and how, like, he didn't say any of that in my podcast. Yeah. And I was thinking, well, damn, bro, like you should have played Spiced that up. up. You should have said all that. Yeah. Everything you should. And so 
he did, you know, I like I have a second channel called Inside the Darkness. So in that one, he did a better job. Mm-hmm. M- maybe it's because I wasn't there to fuck up his rhythm or something. Mm-hmm. And and we'd also had that conversation. So I said, listen, when you sit down and do this, I said, don't, mention the money. Mm-hmm. Talk about the money. And I said, at least bring that up. Like other than like the way people heard people it. People want to hear the money. Well, like people heard it was yeah. I was poor, broke, wasn't doing anything. Then I started doing this and money started coming in. He never talks about How talked about money, money again. Yeah. In the second one, he talks about I bought this. I was living in this condo. I was doing this. I was dating this chick. I had this. I had this. I had the money. And here's how I was doing. Like he really talks it up. That's a great one. Mm-hmm. Like that was a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's but very he, he's a very measured guy when yeah. he talks. Like he he's he was very uncomfortable calculated. too. Yeah. He was. For sure. He was definitely, you know, what's funny is the second one. So on that channel, so I have a, I have a second YouTube channel called inside the darkness mm. that I just started. You know, it's funny about him. Cause you know, I leave the room. Oh no, I did not. So like on a uh, soft white underbelly, you know, um, Mark stays there and asks questions. I, I've already interviewed you. I just interviewed yeah. you downstairs. Right. And I have another room. It's all blacked out. I put them on a chair and just say, tell the same story. And I go, I'm gonna turn on the cameras. I'm gonna leave. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, you're not going to be here. I'm like, no, we just went over it. And what happens is I've had guys tell their story where I talked to them downstairs. No big deal. They told the story. It was good. Went for about an hour and then they go upstairs two hours it. later. Yeah, they go upstairs, and when they walk out of the room, they're in tears, crying. No, like, like yeah, man, I, I like got it's a little a confession. I got a little emotional, and I'm like, "What happened?" He's like, "I don't know, man." I started talking about this, and I and I'm like, "Holy!" Like they get up there by themselves and let loose. Do you know the cameras are here? Yeah, yeah. Like I don't get it. You know the cam- like to them. He's like, "I know, but nobody was there," and I'm like, "Yeah, but the cameras are there." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Dan Wise, uh, the same guy, Dan Wise. He he when he started talking about his uh his girlfriend and what he put her through because of his charges that he, she got charged. He was bawling in tears talking about Damn. it. That's interesting. Ryan actually stopped at several points. He stopped and he went, and this wasn't once. And I don't mean like he stopped for like 10 seconds. We're talking about like a minute or two went by <laughs> yeah. and he was like, well, and he goes, mm. <clears throat> okay, he goes. Okay, so at this point, and then he just started right like he was having a conversation where he was trying to work out. It out. Yeah, he's like, okay, yeah, okay, so yeah. No, no, it was definitely at this. So, so by late two thousand such and such, and then he starts talking again. And I was like, and I was like, that's that's interesting. What that, is that? I don't know. Then he did it again, like ten minutes, twenty minutes later, because mm-hmm. he went for like over and like an hour and a half or something like that. Suddenly, another point, he went. Wait a minute. Um. Hmm. Went and started having a conversation with himself. Yeah, he's uh, and then he started talking again. He's yeah. super smart, man. He's oh, uh, yeah. he's, he's, he's like a, a legitimate biochemist, bio, yeah. and like he's supposedly like one of like the most renowned steroid dealers, like legitimately yeah. too. Yeah, it was, and it's fascinating huge. how the whole steroid community is like more medically versed they know more about like the biology of the human body with the hormones and all the balances of everything than like even a generic uh practitioner would yeah it's when you talk to him like he's like uh, he kind of hems and haws about a bunch of stuff and the moment you start asking him about steroids or anything about the body mm-hmm. boom he immediately he's obsessed with it yeah <laughs> it's like wow you got it's like Boziak will be like ranting and raving and talking mm-hmm. crazy. And then you say, hey, how do, what's a CVV? Okay, so when you get the heck of a card and he immediately yeah. goes into the strip on the back and it, he'll start explaining it. And you're like, like, it's like, yeah, you know it inside now. Yeah, it's, you all can, of it. I was talking to him on the phone because I showed him, a, I showed him my blood work because I got my blood work done and I showed it to him. Right. I, was, I was interested in like, like what are like my testosterone levels versus like all my other, you know, all these biomarkers that I don't even know what the fuck they mean. I'm like, what do you think about this? And he was fucking talking to me for like an hour. Well, this means this, your blood, your blah, 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 blah. Like, like, like rattling off all these different medical terms I'd yeah. never heard of. I can't of. even Explaining say like, the terms. He goes, I can't probably, say the word. He goes, because of this biomarker being elevated to this level, you probably feel like this, this, and this during these times of the day. You probably sleep this. I'm like, wow, you're fucking nailing it. That's crazy. It is really crazy, man. Have you ever tried st- uh, testosterone or steroids? Mm, yeah. Are you on it now? <sighs> Bro, I gained like 10 fucking pounds. Like it's when did you start doing it? What do you mean? I'm Dr. Ryan. 
Oh, since Ryan? Yes. <laughs> oh, talking okay. About? Bro, I was like, I'm tired. I'm this. I'm not making gains. I'm this. I'm that. You know, and he was like, you know, all right, go to your doctor. Get the blood work. Do this. Oh, do you did? That. Okay. You yeah, got yeah. the Ryan Root treatment. Yeah, he's he's a... Uh, he's got a legitimate yeah. deal going. He's got a legitimate little, uh, t what's it called? A TRT clinic? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's something else. Um, so when did you hmm. start doing it? Like a month or so ago. So month, month. immediately after you had the podcast, did the podcast with him. Yeah. Immediately after. Right. You, you went and got your blood work done the next got the day. the blood work done. What was your testosterone level when you got your blood work done? Um, It was like below a thousand something. And now it's... Just below a thousand? Well, I mean, like, I don't know, like 800 or something like that. Okay. It's eight, you know, he's, you know, it was... Eh, but I wasn't making gains. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm working out. And like I'm not in the gym, gains. you mean? Like physical? Mm. Yeah, like physical. and and I'm I'm tired, and I'm you know what I'm saying like it's you know I'm I'm 53 years old, and right. you know you're like, at the perfect time to start doing it. And you, I work out, and like I stay sore all the time, which is great, but it's not great. Mm -hmm. You're always sore. Right. I'm not. You know, I'm not coming back fast enough. I'm mm -hmm. not. But um, yeah, I was gonna say, did I tell you that for my birthday, Jess got me um, Ancestry.com? No. Have you ever done it? Have no, you ever done it? No. I've done 23 and Me. But... Oh, well, it's the same thing, right? Okay, okay. Isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's so. the same thing. Same thing. Like, it tells you where you're from and everything. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so listen, that's what, that's what 23 and Me does. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, um, I'm like 70% Scandinavian, like uh, um, Norwegian. Huh. So I'm 100% Scandinavian. Every, really? Every, yeah. every, and here's what's, what's messed up about that. My whole life. I've been told that I had, you know, a Native American Indian in me. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm brown. Like I never get. You like, look, I, you look part Mexican in, in your, in your, <laughs> in your mugshot, your original mugshot. You look part Mexican. Yeah, or back Hispanic. then you're really tan. Oh yeah, like I listen. If I if I'm go, stay in the sun two days, mm -hmm. like an hour a day for two days, dark. Brown. Three days, listen. A month, brown. Like you can't believe <laughs> so so dark, but. So I've always been, and my father looks like, he looked like a chief. Like he looked like <laughs> really? he, he looked like he should have feathers on his head. Wow. Like everybody. Oh, and he was like, yeah, he's like, I'm Native American Indian. You got okay. pictures of your dad in your phone? Um, I do. And I he, do somewhere. So he's Scandinavian? Well, send me a picture of your dad. I want to put, put it on the TV. Yeah, listen, bro. Let me tell you something. 100%? No, yeah. So here's the problem. What's going on? What the? Like I've been told my whole life. Yeah. You're supposed to be fair skinned. No, but my father is with the Indian. Like, what's mom? You think he's your real what's, dad? No, he's not. I'm sure he's my. Listen, everything else about us. Like, we have the same ears, the same hands, the same yeah. everything about us. You know, same. No, he was a little bit taller than me. We're both. We were both. Suspect. We're both assholes. Like, we okay. both have the same personality. Like, I, I don't doubt that for a second. What I doubt is if why is he so dark? Yeah. Why am I so dark? Why you know? And if you look at it, like it's everything. It's no. Maybe not, there's dark people in Scandinavia. There actually are. So Jess looked it uh -huh. up. And See? here's the thing. Um, Norwegians an Norwegians eat so much salmon. Yeah. There's some chemical in the salmon, so they tend to get dark. Iodine. I, I don't know what it is. Iodine. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I, seafood. Yeah, but there's they... No um, iodine and seafood, bro. I, what the fuck? Yeah, there is. Is there? Yeah, Not bro. salmon. Yeah. Salmon is like... They got like the good oils in there. The, uh, like the bee... There's something in there. What are they called? The B12s? Or Omegas. Omega. Omega oils. Omega brain. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely iodine in seafood, bro. Omega threes. Mm, the krill oil. Um, okay, so back to the testosterone. So what was it like? How much You're did you juicing up? Bro, I've gained how much okay, so what what uh, um, really it's like fifteen pounds, really. Ooh. Yeah. Really? In a I'm, month? I almost, I almost weigh 180 pounds and I'm barely I'm like I'm well, I, I am Take hungry. Take your shirt off. Now I'm That's hungry. All, I'm not taking my shirt Take off. Take your shirt off. Now I'm hungry. All the time. I want to see is. how jacked you are. Take your shirt no, off. I'm not going to look at his arm. Not jacked. Z at He's least flex. Give us a flex like this, like, Hulk, like Hulk Hogan. Give us a Hulk Hogan flex. What do you 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 do it? <coughs> He's pretty big, actually. Is that flex? I don't even. I haven't worked out in like two weeks. Yeah. I, 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 what? I mean, I don't. Oh yeah, know. he's jacked. Look at the camera and do it. Yeah. Look, look at those pythons. Are, 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 those are pythons. So wait, am I going to get? Am I? This is the. Is this the? Um. Yeah. This is the thumbnail. The thumbnail. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. Um, <clears throat> nuts. So, okay, all right. So you got your blood work done. He evaluated your blood work. And what's what has he given you? What, what exactly are you get, are you doing? Um, 
I mean, I, I, bro, I can't even, I don't even know the. How the, many milligrams a oh, week? Oh, listen, what are you doing? Can we talk about something else? Why? Be, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, because. Are you uncomfortable? What? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure. He didn't tell you how many milligrams you, you're no, taking No, he did, week? but I don't even, I didn't even pay attention. Like, I mean, I, I know I'm taking like a, a CC or no, half a CC of something. or Twice a week or once a week? Twice a week. Twice a week. And what? How soon did you feel a difference and what did you feel? I I mean, I, I, I honestly felt just stronger and I, I recuperating quicker. The problem is I'm hungry all the time. That's what I heard, yeah. Like now I'm hungry. Like it used to be it was like I was like 165 pounds just on average. Mm. And then you if weigh I weigh as much as I do. That's how much I weigh too. I, I'm, I probably weigh 180 now. Yeah, like I, about, I, I'm like 175. Yeah, I'm 177, 178. Yeah. Like if I have Damn, a, we the same. Yeah, it's, it's it's you know, and that's bad because I don't want to be 180. I want to be 165, 170. Like so I feel better what, that. What way. about energy levels? Explain that. I feel I I feel like I have more energy. I feel like I'm recuperating I faster. Energy. I feel stronger. And when I work out, like I want to work out. Usually when I'm working, as I'm working out, I'm like, I just want to go home. Yeah. Like I ache, yeah. I hurt. It sucks. <laughs> it does yeah. suck. You know, like I'm working out and it's, it's a struggle. Yeah. yeah. It's so, just not a struggle to get through anything now. Have your balls strength? I, you know, I don't know. I haven't measured my nuts in a long time. You haven't time. noticed anything? No. You haven't noticed the shrinkage? No. Everyone same, I same. Everyone I talk to says their, their nuts get super small after that. No idea. What about hair loss? They're supposed to be, uh, there's some sort of like gene. Mm. I can't afford it. that. Yeah, bro. Yeah, like yeah. that. Come on, man. Are you, were you worried about that before you tried it? No, you, because you, you my really stuff is thought. surgically. Oh yeah, you're right. Stuck so in He's there. got surgical That's procedures. Not out. Interesting. So Matt Cox is on the juice. I need some juice. I know. I need to get some. Well, I'm, I'm afraid to do it. You know, he, he told me, he's like, you should get into it, man. It's pretty cool. And I'm like, he's like, you'll feel better. You'll sleep better. You'll have more energy. And I'm like, yeah, it sounds great. I would definitely do it. But. It shuts off your natural production. That's what I'm worried about. Right. But, and, and I mean, at my age, that's a problem. At your age, you don't give a fuck about your natural production. You can just stay on it. You're in your 50s. I'm right. in my 30s. Well, I mean, yeah, but it would come back in your 30s. In mine, it might just shut off completely. Like, I'm not even. Like, if I stopped. Right. But right. the thing is, like, I don't. What, what if I'm out of town? What if I'm traveling? I'm not going to have my syringes, be able to shoot up twice. It's not, but here's the thing. It's not like a drug. Like, you're. It's not like you're. Withdrawals. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you're you're taking heroin and you're going to have, like, you wouldn't even Sweats. notice. Yeah, you wouldn't even notice that. Yeah, you, you would. You would. He says that you did. Because he I, was when he was on it before he went to prison. Oh, well, I'm sure he was, pro God knows what he was taking. He said depression. He goes, your libido drops to nothing. You don't He's need like, a libido in prison. It's probably better off than that habit. <laughs> no true, doubt. True. He goes, he goes, you just. Hey, you're goes, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> he said he felt like dog shit, like, like true dog shit after he had, went to prison and he could, didn't have it anymore. Is it hot in here? It is. It's always hot in here. We have a oh, fucked right. up AC system. We have the most fucked AC system in, in the world. <laughs> I mean, here. you guys aren't sweating. No, I have to invest a lot of money. It's, it's the I'm juice. I'm drinking a whole thing of coffee. It's raging. But what is going on? I need the liquid. Yeah. Get death. some water in you, man. Ooh, liquid death. Get some salts in your system. Soak up some of that sweat. I'm interested to see uh, how this works out for you in the next couple months and how you start feeling. How much is how much does this cost? Um. You, you interested? Well, I mean, I gotta try it before Appar I buy it. Apparently, it makes you like truly a fucking superhuman. It, it, it improves every aspect of your life. Do I look superhuman? It's not about how you look. I mean, it is about how you look, but it's also about it's mostly how about how feeling. you feel. Are I mean, you feeling I feel superhuman. No, I don't. And and Jess is Maybe still stronger than enough. me. How's your libido? Maybe you need I a heavier mean, dose. How's would, your libido? It's 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 improvement or no. It, there's an extreme improvement. Extreme improvement. Extreme improvement. This is what I've heard unequivocally yeah. from everyone I've talked Ooh. to. Yeah. What's libido? So, so, you know, your desire to have sex. Ooh. Your so, horniness. You know, like... Fuck. He needs like, the opposite of that because he's got, no one to, he's got no one to have sex with except his hands. So. Well, I mean, the you know, as you get... Especially as you get older, like, you know, so you know you're like... Desire. Yeah, you're, you're like, you know, if I had sex twice a week, like, I'm good. You know, but that's not how it is now. No, no. no like now, it's like every now. If if Jesus Christ, Matt, leave me alone. Exactly, if Jess rubs up against me, I'm like, "Hey, are you sleepy?" She's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> I'm like, she's like, "What do you mean? Am I sleepy? What do you, What do you want to do? Have sex?" I'm like, "I mean, I'm just saying." She's like, "Oh my god!" She's like, "What's going on?" I'm like, I'm just saying. You Zipped rubbed up. up. You did rub up against me. She's like, "I'm rolling over." I mean, what was I gonna do? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. So now she sleeps as far away from me as she can. No, she's like, um. Yeah, but yeah, it's 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 
Yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm interested. I'm interested in, in giving it a shot. I'm just worried that I'm too young. I don't want to fucking. I don't. First of all, I don't want my nuts to shrink. Well, they'll come back. It, first of all, is that important? Who cares? Like, I've never once, like, is that something like that? Is that important? My, it, you got some make, big balls. Well, yeah. Has anybody look. ever said that to you? It'll make my no. dick look bigger, though. <laughs> yeah. it'll, make, make, it'll make your dick look bigger if your balls get smaller. <laughs> what Perfect. is going on with you? What do you mean? It's not true. What is, I don't know, but what is it? It's all, first of all, it's you're all married. Me. She's locked in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But still, still, it's the thing you think about. I no, I don't think about you know. I'm, I'm concerned about you know what's wrong, baby. What we're are you more thinking concerned about? about the hairline. Hey, yeah, you want to know uh, what are you thinking about? I wonder about the size of my nuts. Like, while we're, I feel they're a good size. I've never had that conversation. Yeah. Hey, while we're on the subject, I want to share with you a life hack that I've just recently discovered. Okay, this might be. I'm sure there's people out here who do this and know about this. I've never even thought about it until my brother just told me about it a couple weeks ago, and I started doing it. When you wake up in the middle of the night, you have to piss really bad, right? I mean, sometimes. Right. Or early in the morning. Sometimes early I wake in the up, morning. I wake sometimes I wake up before, go now. before I want to wake up and I have to piss. When I piss early in the morning, like I wake up at five or six, I gotta piss. I piss for like two minutes straight. It's healthy. When I'm that tired, when how <laughs> bad you have a huge fucking uh, bladder. Yeah. Like, so I just started sitting down when I piss. Fucking a hundred percent better than standing up when you're pissing and you're tired. You wake How up in the is morning. This all life hack, bro. It is so. Yeah, what, what is that? It is it's just so this is more comfortable. It is so much better. It is more comfortable. You don't have to worry about pissing on the seat. You can and you're you're. <laughs> Are happy. these issues? I don't ever worry about pissing on the seat. Give, give it a shot. I do. I piss all over the seat sometimes when I'm half t- when I'm really tired. You can sit there, just fucking let it hang and in the go, toilet, and go to sleep, and you can just go like this. <laughs> <laughs> Sit there and just let it go. Read a book. You don't have to think. You don't have to worry about aiming. Nothing. <laughs> Sitting down while you're pissing. It bothers me that you think that this is a big thing. It is a big thing. It's a big thing for me. It's really improved the quality of my life. I- <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> What's going on? I'm serious, Wait. man. Give okay. it a shot. Listen, we typically I'm sitting down anyway because I walk in with my phone and I look at TikToks. Oh, so you sit down and pee already? Yeah. Okay. You know who taught me that? Who? In prison, Puerto Ricans. They all sit down when they pee. Oh, really? Plus, when you go in there, you typically sit down and pee anyway because you don't want to piss in the toilet and get little sprinkles all over the place because then you have to wipe the whole thing up because you have a you have a celly. Right. Yeah. He doesn't. He's all you know, pissed off. So every time you go to the bathroom, you have to wipe down, wipe this, wipe that. So what happens is the guys are like, "Look, you just have to sit down." Like, cause otherwise there's just no, or you're, you're hitting the side and you might hit the thing. Like you look, just sit down and piss. Right. And so what you end up having to sit down and I want to say that because you know, and that's the other thing. Another huge benefit is, is my wife can hear me pissing from the bedroom. So if she's sleeping and you hear the, (laughs) you no longer hear that the side of the bowl. Bro, you want me to do all that when it's pitch black and tired. I'm not even fucking awake yet. I'm not even awake. First of all, second of all, it's dark. You're right. Then sit down. For you, this is a big deal. I mean, so, like to me, um, there would be light night lights involved. There's a yeah. night light. There's I'm no. hitting the side. I'm. But well, to me, you're I just you're just trying to present an argument to something I'm thinking that I'm just trying to explain to you. I've discovered that has made my life dramatic. <laughs> better. It bothers me better. that this is that this is made your life. I've been I've been meaning better. to talk about this on the podcast because it's it's really <sighs> it's really improved my life. It really has. It's it's like one little like piece of my life that I would never even think about talking about. <laughs> But it's, I thought, I was thinking about it, I'm like, wow, this is fucking great. It's amazing. But you've been doing it. I didn't know you've been doing it. Yeah, well, it's just, you know, you never heard He's the guy. He's been locked like, up for 13 oh, years. That, that fucking dude sits, uh, pisses sitting down. You know, that's like yeah, a, that a was when I was thing. growing up. Yeah, it was a feminine thing. So I don't want to say that. But, mm. but yeah, the, Port, the Puerto Ricans do it. But the truth is, is everybody ends up doing it in, in prison anyway because, you know, it's disrespectful. You well, get little splashes everywhere. You have to clean it up. You have to, you know. Right. You don't want to do it when you're at the football game in the stadium. But, I mean, no. when you're at home, it's definitely yeah, You nice. don't want to do it in the porta potty. No, you don't want to do it in the fucking <laughs> porta know. potty. Four in the morning and not doing that on the job site, Hell bud. no. Oh, my God. What? Um, A lot of times I wake up in the middle of the night. I just go outside and pee in the backyard. What? Yeah. You go all the way outside? Well, I guess outside the sliding is glass doors you. right there. I mean, I just pop outside, pee on the tree. Uh, you guys are animals. That's hilarious. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> That's funny. Oh my god! I let the dog out. We fucking share a moment. We smoke a cig. <laughs> There's this we funny, pee on the shame tree. There's this funny video Josh sent me the other day. I gotta send this to you, Austin, so you could pull it up. Oh, I sent you a picture of Matt Cox's dad. Can you pull that up? 
Oh, yeah. Oh, I want to see wait. Matt Cox's uh, Scandinavian net in the middle. In the middle? Look how brown he is. Blow well. that up. He looks Italian for sure. Guy on the left's definitely Irish. Is that your mom on the right? Uh-huh. Is it? I actually have one that's wider, but well, it doesn't matter. It's fine. It's still, it's I can't just believe funny. you're on the fucking juice, bro. I can't believe. Yeah. I don't know why you're embarrassed to talk about it. I, I'm 53 years old. You know, I'm 53. That's what 53 year olds are supposed to do. I mean, I, I understand. But first of all, you know what's funny is like I just started doing it. So, yeah. and, I, and my I'm, problem is I've gained, I've gained almost 15 pounds. I've really gained about 15 pounds. Like it depends, probably over fi- over 10, 10, 12 pounds I've gained. And, and it's a problem. Like I, you're I eating too much, right? I'm eating too much and I'm, I'm desperately trying not to. Are you getting like, fat? I mean, I feel like I am. Jess says I'm not. She's like, no, you just look thick. Like you're strong. Like when we work out, like you look good. Like she, she likes it, but she doesn't like me thin. Muscle gains. I mean, I, yeah, I, I mean, you can't, first of all, you can't gain in, in, in a month and a half. You, well, maybe it's been two months in a month and a half to two months. You can't gain 10, 15 pounds of muscle. So it hasn't been 15 pounds of muscle, right. but I'm definitely like everything is lighter. Yeah. That's it's yeah, crazy. It, it's, right. It's, it's crazy. It's super, it's really not like, and then when I do dips, like, you know, I mean, I'm just, I'm smashing out, you know, 30 dips, 40 dips in a row. I'm, 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 I'm you know, do 50, 60 push ups. I'll, you know, I'm just like, and it's killing it's like, it. All right. It's not. And, and then the Batman mask. No, I, that should bring What about Batman. cardio? How's cardio? I mean, ho- I'm horrible at cardio. Is I, it, I do is 10, it harder. Is it easier? No, no it's it, Same. It, since COVID. Since I had COVID. No, since since steroids. No, since, no. since I'm, testosterone. I'm, I'm just saying. Prior to prior to me having COVID, I was doing 30 minutes a day. Okay. Um, and just on the elliptical, right? Like I've I've done maybe one time since COVID, I've been able to do 30 minutes. Like my lungs, I don't know what happened, but so I do 15, maybe 15 minutes, and I, I'm 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 dying. Maybe 20, and I'm mm-hmm. dying. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So. You know, so it, it, what is the, so I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Most importantly, how's your golf swing? I don't, I don't Man golf. Look at me, golf. I'm tiny. I don't have you the body for that. No, I can't. And I can't <coughs> run. I run like a tank. Like it's, it's. You don't it's, have to run playing golf. I know. But I mean, like there's certain things that like my body size, like, you know, I can't do. You know, I'm, 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 I'm a half a midget, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm tiny. I'm tiny. And the worst thing is now we're watching, Jess and I are watching the Game of Thrones. Are you yeah. watching? Oh, the and, dragons and the, one? Yeah. House of Dragons? I don't know. It's the one, that's, the one that's on HBO now, the new series? Or you go? No, no, no. This is the old You're one. You're watching the original Game right, of Thrones. Because to me, okay. the old one is the new one. Like, I never saw that. Right. It's the one with the little guy, the, the little. Yeah, the, yeah, Tyrion. Yeah, Tyrion. Yeah. Like, you know, every time something happens and he does something, like, Jess keeps glancing at me. <laughs> at me. So makes me so oh, mad. Fuck. He is the best character he in the is, show. He is. If he wasn't in it, I don't watch that show no, at all. He is the I fucking watch best, it. bro. He is the best. Yeah. He's, he he's, reminds me of you, actually. His <laughs> w- here it comes. Here it comes. His, you intelli- it on his yourself. intellect and his wit, his dagger tongue. I mean, it's just like you, bro. <laughs> he's oh the my, fucking greatest. Oh, he's the greatest fuck. character. He really is the greatest character. <sighs> Tiny little guy. We got to get him to play you in a biopic. <laughs> uh, what, play, hey, play the. So, so listen, all these guys were telling me, like, all these guys were like, "Oh, you got to do you know the you're the he should be the Dusekis guy." So I came mm-hmm. up with I wrote twenty of these with a, a a guy that a friend of mine, and I did five of them, five video I did five little videos. I'm gonna do the other fifteen because it's for for my Patreon, and I plug them in my in my podcast. And then guys in the comments were like, "Bro, this is hilarious! <laughs> like I can't believe it." But they're funny. I thought they were funny. Yeah, they were super funny. Me and Danny were actually we were laughing about them. The Matt Con, uh, Matt Cox, the little, little bits he does. Well, I don't normally commit America fraud, but when I do, I haven't seen those. Dollars. Yeah, he, we, they were in the group chat with us. Are you joking? You commented on them, oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah like, me and you were talking <laughs> about. Like, you gave me like a thumbs this up for this done. fucking guy. You can't send him shit. No, I know. To, you'd have to show it to me again. It, I send him shit it. all the time. He he didn't watch nothing. <laughs> oh, so this is with a fake ID and his charm. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't typically commit crime, but when I do, it's bank fraud. I never saw this. <laughs> yeah, what? Stay greedy, my friends. <laughs> Stay Support greedy, my channel. friends. I promise you, Matthew seen Cox's it. Patreon. Oh, what a prick. Dude, <laughs> what a prick. Let, listen it's to that. It's great, though, the next I love one. it. Oh. It's another link you probably got. 
Maybe go there to go playlist, maybe. Or there they are. Yeah, yeah. Here, hand that thing over here, bro. It's community community puff. Click, yeah, yeah, that's, the that's one. one, the second one. Law enforcement often questions him, not because he's suspected of a crime, but because they find him fascinating. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't typically commit crime, but when I do, it's bank fraud. Stay greedy, my friends. <laughs> Support the channel. Stay greedy. Join Matthew Cox's. <laughs> my buddy came that up with classic, that. Classic man. Woo! That's great. Yeah, there's like five of them. I love that. They're, I got. I, I need to do the other ones. They're all hilarious. Mm. The plastic surgery one. I got one where I I do. What was it? Uh, oh wait, go to the one that says plastic surgery at the very end. That one, yeah. Yeah. He once conned Bank of America out of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars using nothing but a fake. Hey, you stopped it. No, that's not it. Oh. He once got plastic surgery because he didn't like the photo on his wanted poster. <laughs> his legend precedes him. The I way indictments precede arrests. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't typically commit crime, but when I do, it's bank fraud. <laughs> Stay greedy, my friends. Support the channel. I love that. Join That's, good. That's Patreon. good. That's good. I love that. <gasps> That's good. Oh, stay greedy, my friends. So funny. <laughs> That's good. But yeah, yeah what the we guy's know, voice is before good this, too. We were talking the about guy's great, nailed that. right? Yeah, he sounds just like that guy. He does. Yeah, he does. And I found music like I I, I was trying to get different kinds of music for yeah. the same thing, but I, I I think the music I found is yeah, is it's really good. It's, it's it as close as I can get. Yeah. yeah, you just can't find the perfect stuff. <laughs> so well, before this, you were talking about you looked in the comments of the Pack Owls podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, where they were just like you know, bro, I can't believe you didn't. Um, you know, you, you only made, you know, oh, you didn't make any money. He said he made 50, 60 K maybe total. Really? Cause in the article, um, he, he, it said he made like $7,000 total. Oh, really? Yeah, um, I remember that in the book uh, yeah. or in another doc, another interview I saw with him, he said that too, off a, uh, a propane deal, selling propane. Or right. Something. Right. Um, and then, uh, another guy had said to him, they mentioned, uh, they said, bro, I can't believe you can never, you can't, you can't, you get back into it. And he said, and he said, he definitely could. Yeah. He, he said he could, he goes, well, I don't really know. I haven't looked into it. I'm not interested or something like that. I haven't really looked into it, but the truth is, but Deborah Rowley told me that they were restricted from doing business with the federal government for three years, even though it was for fraud, for defrauding mm -hmm. the federal government right. was only three, three years. years. Yeah. So here's my thing about that. He was he was Devaroli was restricted from doing business with the federal federal government for three years. The Swiss guy Heinrich Heinrich yeah he was Tomei. in the same boat. But they knew they knew Heinrich Tomei was just providing these guys as a middleman all this ammunition to sell to them. Yeah. So the federal government obviously doesn't give a fuck. No, they they don't care. They don't. I mean, they, look, they they need. I, I'm honestly I'm surprised that 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 they even went after these guys, to be honest. Like, they were actually... That one guy, that one freaking... Yeah, it was that one guy. It was that one guy. But they actually went after... I mean, I'm sorry. They actually... They were performing better than, like, General Dynamics, you mm -hmm. know, better better than these and other massive... other companies, yeah. And way cheaper. Yeah. And, and so it's like, why would you... But they needed a fall guy. There was that New York Times article, which was bullshit. Yep. Uh, and they, but they needed a fall guy yeah. and these are the guys and Easy. let's go after them. And, and so we got to hammer somebody. Well, and let's that, hammer these guys. That one investigator based out of Tampa, I forget the uh, department of uh, what the name of that, um, <clears throat> that branch was, what were they? It wasn't DEA. It was, uh, like D I. Oh yeah. Yeah. You mean for the defense department? <laughs> it was like a, he was like a customs guy, but not a customs guy. He was based in Tampa. The guy who basically who investigated them, he, the guy who went to, um, what was the country? Uh, uh, Albania. Albania. The guy who went yeah, to yeah. Albania. It, it was like the, the DS, yeah, DSDC DS. or something like. Yeah, yeah, it was for the for the um. It was the, like they're like the the military mm -hmm. FBI. So this one guy, this one prosecutor, was just super fucking horny for their case, and he wanted to prosecute them and wanted to advance his own career. He had his, he just had his eyes set on this mm -hmm. prize, and he would stop at nothing to fucking hammer these guys. And when he went to the army, and talked to them about it, like, look. These guys are doing this. They're using these Chinese ammo, and the, the people of the army who are they're like, let them ride. They're like, there's nothing wrong with what these guys are doing. The ammo is perfect. <laughs> right. All of the ammo works. People on the ground in Iraq or in Afghanistan are testing it. There's no problems with it, and it's getting delivered on time. So why would we fucking throw a wrench into this 
system that's working. It, and this guy just for political reasons, for to advance his own career, he wanted to fucking pursue it just out of ambition. He was just this human nature. He wanted to advance his own career. Uh, Deveroli actually had a, a, a letter from the U.S. military that said that they didn't have one single reporting of one round not firing yeah, that he had provided. Insane. Not one. But if you read the New York Times article, it makes it sound like everything they were providing was falling apart and rusting and damaged. and there was Complete nothing. lies. It's bullshit. There was one batch of ammo they got from like Slovenia or somewhere that was like way before this. Tarnished. Tarn. It was only tarnished. <laughs> yeah. It did not not work. It was just, just tarnished. Look it looked like shit. It right. wasn't shiny. Right, right, yeah. right. Would it fire? Yeah. Was it and, and Devroli said, you know what's funny? He said you can actually take that ammunition because he did this before. I talk about it in the book. He had gotten stuff that had been shipped from, I think, Israel, and it had gotten salt water damage, like it hadn't been sealed properly. And polish so, it up. Right. And then you know what they polish it in? Oh God. It was um I think it was corn or something. Oh yeah. Like corn meat or so I forget, but they put corn it in meal? like corn meal. corn meal. And they put it they put that in with in like a dryer, or like a, a dryer mm-hmm. that, or a washer or something, they yeah. they do it and they pull it out and it's all nice and shiny. It, it oh, buffs wow. it, buffs it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, "Are you serious?" He goes, "Yeah." Wow. Yeah. I mean, listen, he, you know, Devaroli was a, an ingenious guy, hardworking hustler. You can you can't trust him for as far as you can throw him. I mean, <laughs> he was just like he's one of those fucking guys who all he thinks about is money. Yeah. He'll he'll never be poor. He'll never be poor. That's he, for sure. He's one of those guys. It's funny because um, uh, Boziak and I were talking about this the other day. And we were we were talking about it. And I mean, I think this is just in, in general. Like if you watch like these guys like Jordan Peterson or a, a lot of these guys, they'll tell you that um, there are some people that you could take this person and you can say, hey, I'm going to take this person. I'm going to put him over here and give him nothing. You got nothing. Okay. And. Three years from now, he'll be be a millionaire. Yeah. You're gonna take everything away from him, I'm taking everything from you. Okay, I'm gonna put you over here in this state. You know, I'm gonna drop you off in the middle of Ohio. Okay, three years from now, he'll be a millionaire. Don't you don't need the same contacts, anything. Yeah. Yeah. He'll they'll You're those people figure it out. They'll figure it out. Then there are other people you can say, hey, here's ten million dollars. Three years up. from now, they'll be claiming bankruptcy. Yeah, mm-hmm. and there's just some of those. And then you can say, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? Here's another ten million. Three, they might make it four years. Like there's some people that are just, they're just, they're just hustlers. And that, that's Deveroli. You could take everything from him and he will be a multimillionaire. Now, granted, in Deveroli's case, he'll destroy everyone that comes across. He'll rip <laughs> yeah. every single person mm-hmm. off that yeah. comes across his path to do it, but he will do it. He'll do it. Yeah. It's interesting, man. Just the way his fucking mind works. So fucking interesting. You, you know what's funny too is it's I. It's such a, like a rare, it's a rare thing too. And I, it, I would have loved to have been here when Packhouse was here. I wish you would have been here when that guy was I, here. Yeah, I wish I could have, but that guy flew in from Vegas. Yeah. Um, Fuck, that would have been good, man. But he literally, it was, yeah, Deveroli was just, it, it was, it, you know, you start to realize like it's, you know, you spend enough time with him, you start to realize like, like you're sick. Mm-hmm. Like you've got a real problem. And and I'm, you know, super nice to the guy and super, you know, um, you know, understanding. And, and I was very impressed with him. It was just super, very impressive. Uh, guy and the way his mind worked and everything with the exception of the fact that that he literally didn't he he it discussed if he made 200,000 on a deal and you made 100,000 he was disgusted that he had to give you 100 even if you brought him the deal mm. like you could cut him in on the deal yeah he gets 200 yeah and he'd be disgusted that you were going to make 100,000 because in his mind that That's was 100,000 he should get that 100,000 you know, it's like I know I know a couple people that are just like that Oh, I know about I know a handful of guys who are just fucking like that. That's scary. I don't know the way you're saying it scares me. Like <laughs> yeah. it's just funny because it's like identical mindsets, and it's it's when you can connect two people that have the same exact mindset and way of thinking. It's 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 funny when you can do that. I was gonna say that um, he, yeah, yeah. It's 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 a rare thing. Disturbing. How do how do they get like that? Is it nature? I, I, I mean, it, it, the thing is, is like if you take Deveroli's, like I met his brother. Like I, I think I met his both brother. His, yeah, that's what I met his sister said. and both his brothers. Like, he said none of his siblings are like that. No, none of them. None of them. His sister is super, um, you know, like protective of him. But 
but she seemed like a nice person. Like I, I emailed her all the time. Like she was doing, looking stuff up for me, pulling stuff, you know, all everything for, for his case. Very nice person. You know, his brothers were humble and nice and polite. He was just vastly different, vastly mm. different. She the old, he was the oldest, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. And, and I, I wonder, it's like, like, yeah, I would have loved to have talked to Packhouse about him. Like, you know, it was, it, it was super weird. Like just the, some of the things he would do and say, and it was just like, you know, it was funny. He could be really funny, mm-hmm. but it, it just, it, it, you know, in the manipulation, like it, it's blatant, like it's mm-hmm. different if you're subtly manipulative and maybe you might figure out, Hey, this guy's kind of manipulative over time mm-hmm. with him. You very quickly could see from it. the start, from the very start. He would, he, and he, he'd do those kinds of things where he'd say stuff like, you know, to try and get you to do something like, yeah, bro, you ought to do this for me. You know, bro, I'm telling you, you're going to make a ton of money. A ton of money. Like, you don't want to make money. You don't like money. What's wrong with you? I'm trying to help you, bro. I'm trying to help you. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I can't help you. I can't. And it's like, Jesus, Christ. like, calm down, calm down, high pressure, pushy, 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 pushy. And then the moment everything starts to fall, you know, next thing, you know, and then as, as things start starting to happen, it's like, okay, so we're going to have everything. Uh, We're going to have everything put in my bank account. And, <laughs> and it's like, mm. you know, and then you're like, yeah, bro, why don't, I don't understand. They'll, they can cut you a check and cut me a check. Bro, listen, you don't know anything about this, okay? This is taxes. Okay, this, this is the way my accountant wants it, okay? I'm cutting you in on this. I'm cutting you. You don't want a part of it? You don't want a part of it? And you're like, Jesus Christ. Like, what? You know, but you realize. So after, overbearing. After, oh, extremely. After he fucks you over, you realize, oh, wow, mm-hmm. bro. Like, you got me to do all these things. You never paid me. You had all the money deposited in your account. Mm-hmm. And then. You didn't pay me. You you just stopped talking to me. And every time I said, hey, man, you owe me money. Yeah, fuck you. Get a lawyer. Mm-hmm. And it was like blatant. It's like, what? you're not even pretending to come up with a reason why you're not <laughs> yeah, paying no. me. You're saying, go fuck up. yourself. Yeah. You live in a building where I can't get in. He's scared all the time. Worried somebody's going to. Someday somebody, somebody will kill him. Mm-hmm. And, you think? Oh, I mean, I. <laughs> You have, you know, what sl- helps me sleep at night is thinking at some point it will catch up with him. But the truth is, he'll probably go his entire life. The he's nice, a, he's we- a cockroach. He's a survivor, right? But the nice thing, what I do know is this: after spending enough time with him, what I do know is this: he's a deeply, deeply unhappy person. Really, mm-hmm. extremely unhappy. Listen, why you, you tell me? This guy is drugs on drugs all the time. And doesn't even like hide it. Like he'll tell you, like I'm, I'm on either coke, I'm I'm smoking pot to sleep, I'm taking coke when I get up, I'm drinking this. Like couple I mean, rounds, couple lungs. You know what? You, you know what's to. weird? It's he like has to. It to also in the book they're explaining like as soon as he wakes up and starts looking on the computer, like he he wakes up, he's on his computer looking for money, looking for deals, right? But he's also ripping the fucking bong at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't doubt that. Just I mean, taking yeah. the edge off. He's, he's in, it's insane. I mean, it's it's doing anything. He, he, the drugs are keeping him up. Uh, bring, and look, it's so funny. Like when he read my book. Roller coaster. He read, <laughs> he read my book and he was like, yo, bro. He goes, this is the best thing I've ever, re- I've ever read. And I went, this is when I was writing his outline in prison. And he goes, this is the best thing I've ever read, ever. And he goes, I want you to write my book. I was like, bro, you can get like a professional. He's like, you're a professional. This is the best thing I've ever read. And and I was like, and so he's now was trying to convince me that I later found out like he'd read, he'd read like five books his whole life or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and, and I was like, hey, bro, you told me this is the best thing you'd ever read. The best. And he's like, and he's like, it is. It's amazing. You, you, it was. It's amazing. And I was like, yeah, but you just told me that you've only read three or four books your whole life. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, well, I mean, I I read like magazines sometimes, but mostly what I read is contracts. And it's like, so you're comparing me to government contracts? Like, <laughs> like, that's not a fair, you know what I'm that's saying? Like, funny. I don't feel good about myself at all now. <laughs> but at that time, he was m- trying to manipulate me into a position where I would write a story. Yeah. So that he could ultimately rip me off and leave me in prison, mm. which is what he did. Mm. I mean, he's it, good at what he does. He's great. But why do you think he's so deeply unhappy? He's scamming people. Well. I mean, I think you can scam people and still be happy. For sure. Yeah, but I, there's I, always that thought back there where you're doing you're doing you're wrong. You're doing yeah, you're doing dirt and, and fucking people were out for you. And that's what I think. He's so overly blatant about it that deep down you you know you're fucking people over. But, you know what you're doing's wrong. But he values he clearly and he's not ashamed of it that he values money over everything. Absolutely. Yeah. 
But what, what what's propping up that value? Why does he value money? He's just a deeply unhappy person. He's super insecure. I Why? mean, Why is he insecure? I don't know. I mean, he he was taught he talked about like so they grew up in the kind of the shadows of a, like a, a very of a, a wealthy area, but they didn't have money. Mm. His billion his uh, uncle's a billionaire apparently, or his grandfather's a billionaire. Packhouse said he's got a billionaire uh, uncle, or not uncle, grandfather. Which one? Like I don't know who that is. So you know the uncle he worked for in L.A. Yeah. at the pawn shop. Yeah, his father, the billionaire. Oh okay. Oh that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. How you're right. You're right. Shop. You're right. You're right. I forgot about that. That's you're how right. he got that pawn shop. Um, well, it's not just pawn shop. He sells guns. Right. He sells. Yeah, he's he, the one he who does kind of government got, contracts. Right. <clears> he's <throat> the one who got him in, kind of like, you know, and Deveroli immediately started going in for the weapons. Right. Yeah. You know, but think about it too. He's super into weapons. Like it's, 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 it's basically, it fills some kind of insecurity mm -hmm. that he's got. Do you hear that? Yes. Yeah, the AC. Oh, okay. Like it, it, it fulfills some kind of insecurity that he has. Like he can't have a long-term relationship with like a woman. He can't, you know, he can't have long-term friendships. Mm -hmm. He can't, everything has to be revolve around money. And the thing about him is like, he's the kind of guy that you'd go out, he'd pay for everything, you know? But, you know, if there was a deal, he'd fuck you out of it, too. He'd hold, then, you, he'd yeah. hold shit over your head. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, he he didn't mind spending money, you know, a little bit. Like, it's... But think about it. If you're a multi-multi-millionaire paying 80 bucks for dinner... Yeah, it's nothing. Isn't that big of a deal. In, and keep in mind, he's doing it. He wants you to like him. Mm -hmm. He wants you to feel good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eventually you get out of it. Right. And, it, well, and at some point, I may need you. Yeah. Oh, so you let me fuck it. So, oh, for two dinners. years I've been buying for buying dinners, getting you into places, doing this, doing that, filling your car up with with gas, doing doing all these nice things for you. And now what I ask you for one thing, one thing. That's the kind of friend that you're like, hey, Jesus, calm down. Okay, bro. Yeah, I'll make the call. I'll make the call. <laughs> Jesus. Is he very, is he physically intimidating? Hey, he is, but he's harmless. Like it's all bluster. How, how tall is he? Oh, he's, he's five, five, eight, five, nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. But he's he's in like he's he's in good shape. Mm -hmm. Like he was last time I saw him at the strip club, he was in good shape. When was that? He was in good shape when he left. Uh, left. Uh, he looked fat as fuck in his mugshot. Oh, he was fat. Yeah, in the mugshot, what happened was he he typically was thin. If you look at all the photos online, mm -hmm. um, when he was uh, uh when he was doing the deals, yeah, he, he was looked thin. normal. Yeah, and then when he was placed on the ankle monitor on pretrial release, he couldn't leave home. So he's eating. He's sitting at home. He can't do drugs. Mm. So what's he doing? He's he's ordering pizza. He's eating. He's eating. He's eating. Like he he can't do anything. But this is a guy who's got a compulsive personality. Mm, yeah. He's still doing deals. He's still in his condo doing deals. You know. But I mean, he's doing. He he's hustling nonstop. But he he got real fat. So when they eventually when they arrest him, they take that picture. He's fat. But that, and that's the big thing is like you had this. The one time he was fat in his life, you end up having Jonah Hill play him. Like there was the like whole time, yeah. right? But that's not how he was. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. Funny. He's probably still doing arms deals, right? He's probably still doing fulfilling government contracts. I'm doing sure the same he's, thing. He's got to be. I'm sure he's doing something. Like, did Pacquiao's talk about? Uh, did Pacquiao's talk about uh, him suing him? Because you know Pacquiao's and uh, um, Ralph were suing him. Currently, but I, they were. I don't know if they are. That's he what didn't I'm talk saying. About that at all? No. Okay. So maybe they settled that lawsuit. Maybe. You know, he was trying to sue him saying, hey, we had a deal. Yeah. You know, we had a deal. What, you know, I worked all, I did all this work. I was, you know, worked for hours and hours. Like I'm working my regular job as a, as a masseuse. And then I'm coming here and I'm working eight or 10 hours a day for you. And then when all the money happened, all the money came in, you took the money. Yeah. Yeah. Pack House was mainly just like, he. You know, he talked about like in hindsight, he regrets just basically being so naive to him and basically trusting somebody who he should have done his background and being just very naive. And I'm, I was explaining to him like, dude, I'm like, you were in your 20s. Yeah, you're a kid. You and did so much. You did. You did so much and learned so much from it. Even if you didn't make that much money, it was still such a fucking important experience, you know, and you learned. I mean. The, just the lessons you took from it. What's Pacquiao doing now? At such a young age. People, typically, yeah. people get fucked over in his situation. So, sometimes it takes people to their 40s or 50s till they get fucked over and they learn, you know, human right. nature like that. What's Pacquiao doing now? So now he's got these inventions. He's like inventing these business. He has this one bit, uh, one business called, uh, what was the toothbrush thing? Instafloss. Insta -floss. He's got this thing called Instafloss. So you know those like uh, water picks that mm -hmm. people use to like floss their teeth? He's got this water pick thing that basically 
Look, this is it. <clears throat> you put it in. You put it in your mouth, and it does the tops and the bottoms. You just go like this. You go from one side to the other, and it does tops and bottoms, flosses in between all your teeth with water. Oh, so it's like a stream of water shooting through, yep. like a and it's jet? Like one-shot jet across all your teeth in once. It's pretty cool. Check it out. Watch it. Play the video. It's only a minute. Because flossing blows. This looks pretty cool. I feel like her teeth were that white before she flossed. Yeah, uh, maybe. It's possible. But, but it's possible that he, the flossing did that. <laughs> so he's, yeah, look at that. How sick is that? Yeah, I need that. Yeah, I need that too. Actually, I'm going to go buy one. I was going to say, did he bring you one? Well, yeah, wait. he brought one in and showed and like demoed it. Demo to mm -hmm. you got to leave one. I know. I wish you would. So have. where where do you buy them? Are they on like well, on Insta on their on their website right now? Pre order. Oh, okay. Dot com. So a hundred bucks. And um, he's got another thing. He's got another business called um. It's a sound. It's a basically what it is. It's a beat. It's basically like a drum machine for guitarists that you operate with your foot. So like the guitars when they play whatever they play tracks to mm -hmm. certain songs whatever they have to have some sort of like this is it right here a beat buddy. So it's like a drum machine that you operate with your foot for musicians. It's pretty cool. I guess it's like one of the first of its kind. There's a uh, lot of those out there. Yeah. A lot of, uh, a lot of first there are a, a lot of these. A, a, a lot of these. Oh. Yeah, so they have all kinds of different music, like musical equipment. It's pretty cool, though. So that's his main business right there. I guess that's worldwide, and that that's pretty successful already. But his new, newest startup is that InstaFloss thing. It's interesting. Yeah, I don't play the guitar. He's so an really entrepreneur. Understand, understand, but yeah, yeah, bro. Like you, you know what? What what's so funny too is like you you do something like that, right? Like you bust your ass for a year or two, put put it together, get the stuff, get a designer, get a, a you know someone to manufacture it, the whole thing, and then the money starts to come in, and then like so like you struggle for years, and then the money starts to come in, and then he'll. Now he's now it's freed up his time. Now he'll end up end up inventing something else and something like you ever notice that like guys will get a little bit of money and next thing you know yeah. that boom they blow up and it's like why well because now I don't have I got money coming in to pay my yeah. bills I can now de dedicate all my time to this project right you know what I'm saying right. like it's that sacrifice of of years to get yourself to a point where you've got that residual income coming in and now you can really put your time into something. Mm. That's why like, it was what? How long did it take him to come up with the first one? Now he's already got the floss thing. Exactly. But didn't he work a couple of years, two, three years to get the, yeah. the beat buddy? Now yeah. it's suddenly, boom, this this one, now it's gonna be that one and that mm -hmm. one and watch, he'll end up having fucking 50 and, and then he'll he, be a billionaire. I know he's been, yeah. I know he's been dealing with the, uh, the whole like uh, supply crisis, supply chain mm -hmm. deal with China, trying to get his stuff in and get it manufactured. China. Um, he was also what was, was, was really interesting was he was talking about Ukraine and he was talking because he spent a lot of time dealing with people in Ukraine buying what ammo you and buying arms and he was explaining I was explaining like the he was explaining um, basically you know how there's like a billions of dollars being funded into Ukraine to fight this thing. Um, he was saying a ton he, of it's going in their po own pockets. No, 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 he wasn't saying that. He wasn't saying that. But basically he was explaining that like a lot of it is coming straight from the U S so it's a lot of our supply that we already have. So it's not like that, like traditionally to fund wars like this, the U S would go to companies like Raytheon or Boeing or uh, Lockheed and, and it would take months. To, they would they have, need stuff now, put the contract out. People would bid on them, but they, they need stuff now. So it's coming directly from our supply. And because we're supplying them with stuff that we already have our reserves, we're basically older stuff. They're getting the debt. So now Ukraine's into debt, to, uh, in debt to us yeah. for all this stuff. Um, so they got, yeah, win. the Ukraine, they got them now. <laughs> well, now, now they got to win. Yeah. Why? Cause they owe us money. Yeah. The Ukraine thing is crazy. It's because like we're escalating like the most terrifying thing. Mankind is aware, like the most terrifying threat to mankind is since mankind. world war two nuclear war between the U.S. and Russia, right? right, And we're just escalating it and pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and trying to escalate this war with the Ukraine. And um, there's this video I sent Austin. Where's this going? <laughs> Austin, pull up that video I, I sent you earlier. There's this, uh, what's this guy's name again? 
Colbert. Like Colbert. Okay, Gideon. Gideon. Ro- Gideon what is, it? is that how you say it? Gideon? Gideon Rose. Play this. This is fucking crazy. So this is like, this was three years ago on uh, Colbert yeah. Report. Have you seen this? No. Play no. this. So basically what he does, he explains everything that's going on right now, basically in Ukraine. But we're currently denying it all. We're just saying we need to support the people in Ukraine. But we've been backing this fucking mad dog Putin into a corner forever, like expanding NATO. And, you know, Putin even talks about it, how there's all these rocket sites, these missile sites that are in Poland and and in these other countries surrounding them, former Soviet Union countries that could be within minutes turned into offensive launch sites to launch nukes. Right. And um, we're saying, no, 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 we need to, you know, Putin's this crazy fucking psychopath who could just, you know, destroy the, the fucking planet with his nukes. But this guy basically explains what's going on right now between the U.S. and Ukraine and Russia. Three years ago. This is three years ago. But they won't talk about this now. I think what what he's referring to right now is there was a coup in the Ukraine in 2016. It wasn't the, was it the, when they invaded uh, uh, Crimea? Was, is that, this is not, this is not Crimea. No, I think this is, this is in 2016, I believe. There was a coup in the Ukraine, basically where the president of the Ukraine, um, was elected and he decided to like do some sort of trade deal with Russia and like stay. I'm fucking not saying this the right way, but stay friendly to Russia. Right. Right. And there was this uprising in the Ukraine where all these people basically put like took over the capital. It was basically all the cops in the Ukraine versus all the people in the Ukraine fighting. Tons of people died. Tons of people got arrested. There was snipers shooting civilians and cops and, um, there's a whole documentary about it called Ukraine on fire and, um, the CIA was allegedly involved, involved in, in, in pushing the- in, in supporting this coup. So the U S instigated this whole thing because they didn't want a president in the Ukraine that was friendly with Putin. Right. Right. Okay. So, okay, go ahead keep playing the video. <laughs> Fucking just laid it all out for you. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Yeah, and there's there's recorded um, there's recorded calls in uh, uh, Oliver Stone's documentary called Ukraine on Fire with the uh, Secretary of State Victoria Newland, who was heavily involved in Iraq when Biden was vice president to Obama, mm-hmm. um, and they're talking about like installing a new regime in Ukraine, and it's all recorded. And she's like, "Fuck," the, she says, literally, she says, "Fuck the EU," on the phone call. It's all in the documentary. It's fucking insane, bro. Yeah. Well. I mean, you know, it's it's like the United States does, you know, what's in their best interest and, you know, Russia does what's in their best interest. I mean, everybody's trying to do what's in their best interest. Mm-hmm. You know, we believe that we believe that our version of the Ukrainian future is the best course of action for them. It's also the best course of action for us, of mm-hmm. course. And Russia believes that they don't like the fact that that they're moving or that they want to move towards a more toward the U towards the U, um, UK or the, the um, yeah. European Union or the West. And they don't want them to do that. And they want them to stay kind of under their umbrella. They want them to kind of be that buffer between them and Western Europe. And so you want I mean, to know what's crazy in the beginning of this whole thing, Ukraine and Russia had a deal. They literally had a deal for Ukraine to become autonomous and to for Russia to basically keep control, of like the Donbass Eastern region. Right. And, and don't and th- don't 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 go. NATO. Don't join NATO. Right. We'll there, leave you alone. There was a whole deal. And then right. we stuck our foot in it and it, it escalated into this crazy fucking fiasco. Yeah. It's crazy, man. I mean, I get it. You know, I hear you. I hear you. Everybody's looking out for their best interest. There's a video. Actually, I just saw on Twitter today. There's a video. Have you seen it? There's a video of Zelensky standing there with these two big giant. Like, I know. You see how tiny he is? <laughs> I didn't realize how tiny he and was. he's signing the NATO application. He's like, I signed this application. It looks like some fucking goofy like spoof video. Can you find that video of Zelensky signing the NATO application? It's fucking hilarious. It looks like something that like Comedy Central would produce. What's your, what you what's your fortune? I'm gonna take my fortune too. Look at mine's all fucking tore up. All your sorrows will vanish. <laughs> I don't really have any sorrows. Yeah, I, I was gonna know. say, what sorrows do you have? I'm happy, bro. I'm I'm happy <coughs> living with a chick I'm in love with. Um, engaged. I'm, engaged. I'm engaged to be married. I mean, I'm, I'm fucking swole, 185. One- Woo! On the sauce. <laughs> things, are, things are going good. I've got. 
Testosterone, you know. libido shooting through the fucking roof. I mean, money's not exactly coming in, but it's I'm doing it's okay. In the horizon. It's, it's, it's I'm doing okay. I'm paying my bills. It's good. Bottom right of the video. Look how tiny is he? Like five foot tall. Like I mean, who are? Look at these guys. Look at this shit. We gotta admit, this guy's in the trenches, bro. Have Vladimir, and um, this is ridiculous. What's another German name? I'm mean, another Russian name. Look. Мы робимо свій визначальний крок, підписуючи заявку України на вступ у пришвидшеному порядку в НАТО. Is that his real voice? I mean, NATO. I don't know. Listen, Who reviews his application? I want to know that. The Biden. Well, listen, I think it's going to get approved. <laughs> I feel strongly about that. Jesus listen, Christ. I I did. So, I I did a um a thing the other day for this German company, uh, for a, a production company in Germany for a show that they're doing. Um, listen, every time they talk German, like only the only German I've ever seen, or like I've been to Germany, but. You know, when I was younger, but like the German shows that you've seen are all like Nazis, you know, World War Two. So the moment they start talking, I'm thinking, fuck, they're like, I, all I can hear is like, yes. take this one to the gas chamber. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm, every time they talk, it's like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, it's it's terrifying listening. It's a horrible language. Mm. It's horrible. It's not sexy. Sounds a little angry. It is. It is. It's not like French. It's like French is like rolls off their tongue. It's like, oh, it sounds nice. It's pretty. They start talking and I think I'm in danger. Mm. Yeah. I'm in danger. That's like funny. all the women. <laughs> all right, let's wrap this up. This has uh, been a wonderful two hour. How long? Were we? It's nine o'clock. What time do we start? This Clean. is almost three hour podcast. Yeah. Take the women. Thanks for coming. Adios. Good night, folks.